Smith and McFevers. And a very good evening, everyone. Welcome to a very wet Sydney cricket ground for the second uh, state match between Queensland and New South Wales. This state of origin game, which is the moment of truth for New South Wales. Very wet conditions out here. The rain started at about 2.30, 3 o'clock this afternoon. And Mick, it's been, uh, well, it's been, hasn't stopped since then. No, it's been pelting down, unfortunately, Bill. But I tell you what, they've at last stirred these New South Wales them into some sort of semblance of uh, support. They're standing out of the rain on the hill, and I don't think I can remember that since about, what, 62? 66 in the test so they're a bit keen tonight very very keen indeed and of course they've been there's a good shot of the crowd and the Brabongal stand we're right up the top of that having a good look down right onto this ground which incidentally is pretty wet out there on the center that's where the cricket pitches are and if we go back to the second match in the state of origin series last year that's when it was a quagmire they haven't had as much as rain as uh, on that occasion but it's still going to be a little bit heavy and uh, a little bit difficult for the players out there well the Queensland team Mick this afternoon was six to four on favorites but I'd say it's back to about an even money bet oh, I'd have to be an even even money bet uh, these weather conditions certainly bring everyone back to tours but I tell you what uh, they're all after Wally's cap down here tonight and uh, well we'll see if they can get it me I have me doubts boy let's have a look at the teams for the match tonight firstly the fullback here for Queensland is Colin Scott the wingers are Kerry Bosted and also Mal Meninga in the centres Gene Miles and Chris Close the 5 8 is Wally Lewis and the halfback is Mark Murray the lock forward Paul Morton second rowers are Wally Fullerton Smith and Brian Needling and the front rowers Dave Brown Greg Kineskew and Greg Dowling that's how the Queensland team lines up for the match tonight interestingly enough Mick the Queensland combination has been kept together pretty much for a number of years and if you go back to the first state of origin match in 1980 five of those players are stepping out for Queensland tonight and that's uh, going to help a lot for Queensland and they'll need a bit of help as the Blues run onto the field and as they do run onto the field let's have a look at the New South Wales team the fullback just taking the field was Gary Jack the wingers are Eric Groth and Ross Conlon in the centres Andrew Farrer and Brett Kinney the 5'8 this Terry Lamb and the halfback Steve Mortimer. Lock forward is Ray Price. In the second row it's Wayne Pierce and Noel Cleal. And the front row is Peter Tux, Roy Simmons and Steve Roach. Well, New South Wales, as I said, have to win tonight to keep the series alive. Queensland, of course, won the first state of origin match at Lang Park on May 29. They won it by 29 points to 12 in probably the most comprehensive victory I think we've seen from Queensland in the whole of these state of origin matches. True, Bill, and I tell you what, Peter Moore there, giving him a bit of a psych and a kick up these New South Wales as they run onto the field. Yes, well, they need a bit of a psych up too. They have the job ahead of them tonight. Uh, let's have a look, uh, firstly, now at uh, results uh, in that early one, of course, 29 to 12. Queensland have won seven from nine in state of origin matches. Here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, it's one all. New South Wales did defeat Queensland last year in that second match by 10 points to six. So uh, that's how they stand at this stage. The big pace tonight, of course, is going to be Terry Lamb and Wally Lewis. Be interesting, and of course, don't forget Steve Mortimer and Mark Murray inside. Those two 5'8s are standoff off. Won't move unless those two men function. Be interesting to see the tactics, because I'll have changed uh, them around a little bit with these wet conditions. The chip kick will be on, the one along the ground. And, uh, well they'll have to play to the conditions they're allowed to play in, Bill. Well, uh, Ray Price during the week said that uh, if they could get 35,000 people to the Sydney Cricket Ground tonight, New South Wales will win. They're relying on the crowd, Michael, to, uh, to give them a boost, and uh, they've sort of G'd them up right the way through, and there were pen pictures coming up of the uh, players on the electronic scoreboard here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and the crowd had sustained cheers, obviously, for New South Wales, but plenty of blues boos when the Maroons came up, and that's part of the game, that's part of giving everyone excited, and I don't know about you, but I don't need much to get me excited here tonight. Looks like being a great match. Certainly is going to be a great match. Why they even threw Joe, Sir Joe up onto the screen and uh, uh, they even got into him. All right. Uh, by the way, too, uh, our um, guest, uh, special guest with us tonight is the Great Britain coach Frank Myler. He'll be joining us uh, at various times throughout this match tonight. And don't forget, of course, at half time and also at full time, our studio group up there, David Wright, uh, Barry Muir, Greg Oliphant and the Great Britain captain Brian Noble. So whichever way you go, you're covered all the way around here in our coverage of this second State of Origin match here this evening. Well, there's uh, Greg Dowling, the last of the players to go onto the field. Wally Lewis, the captain, and he's got the most sustained boo you've heard for quite some time. Uh, obviously, Lamb and Lewis, um, Artie Beetson said that he believes that uh, the Can Canterbury connection are going to play the offside, but uh, that comes back, of course, to the referee, Barry Gomesall. He's the man that has to look after that. Now, he's just been introduced to the crowd, so you won't hear too much for uh, Barry, except booze. But I don't think that'll worry him, Mick. He's got a job to do, and uh, he, he will do it quite admirably, I oh, feel. He's a, he's a very good referee, and uh, he doesn't uh, worry about this. Actually, I think he thrives on it. 
and uh, the bigger the match the better he goes also too of course we have our electronic sales and rentals try of the match competition that'll be coming up at the conclusion of this game you can win an NEC video recorder plus a 300 movie swap package from electronic sales and rentals the entry forms by the way for that will be in the Daily Sun tomorrow by the way too welcome to our viewers Mick right throughout the state through SEQ8 at Miraburra MVQ6 at Mackay RTQ7 in Rockhampton TNQ7 at Townsville FNQ10 at Cairns and ITQ8 at Mount Isa and of course during the evening bill I think the Blues have got a to me and Sewell to wog on me too. I've got a bit of a cold. If I cough or splutter, viewers, you'll just have to put up with it because it'll be because of excitement. All right, you can see that rain tumbling down. That's Brett Kenny, the New South Wales centre. Terry Lamb has a big job in his hands tonight. That's Colin Scott, the Queensland fullback. And there's Big Arthur with a cap on and uh, a bit of a smile. He loves a giggle, this boy. And he, he's having it right now, but he's done up ready for the kill here tonight and toss a turner there beside him. So this crowd starting to get nice and warmed up here for this match tonight. And uh, I can't say I blame them. New South Wales definitely needing uh, to win this one tonight. I think we might see a little bit of fun and games early on. Here's Mr. Gnomasil. And it's uh, Queensland won the toss. They're coming from the Paddington end of the ground, but that is Ross Connell, the man to kick off for New South Wales, carrying deep up into Queensland territory. It'll be picked up back there by Colin Scott. Scott will run it up, and the first tackle of the match uh, is going to come about over there from the 5'8 in Terry Mann. Dummy half is Kinescu. As the fireworks still keep going here, that's Steve Mortimer getting up to Gene Miles, but Miles bustled his way through. And here's the first penalty of the match, and there's a blue on already. They really got into Miles on that occasion. There's Miles back up again. And they're breaking up in all sorts of areas. Over on the left, it's Colin Scott and Gary Jack. Wally Lewis is in the centre. The fireworks are not only going off on the sideline, Mick, they're going on out in the centre, and there's plenty of them coming on too. Oh, a couple of players with jerseys off at the moment. Chris Close has had his jersey pulled off over his head, and he's let a few go too, but they've just about broken them all up. No, they're now not. it's on again. Dowling and, and Roach. Close is copping plenty in there. Peter Tunks is doing a bit too. Tunks was at close, uh, throwing plenty into him. So now, referee Gomez all. Well, we did expect a few fireworks. We've certainly got them. I didn't think that'd come that early. I could feel it, mate. They were psyched up and ready to, to swoop. Um, they're all quietly getting back into it now. You might see a bit more, but... Uh, Mr. Gomez is going to have a quiet chat to them. I think he's going to call both teams in here and uh, lay down the law from the outset. Once again, you see there's no one lying on the ground, Bill, and not much blood, so no damage done. I know, the purists will say, well, that's not rugby league. When you get to this standard, you've got to cop this as well as play good football. If you can't do this, you stay at home. All right, now, penalty going to Queensland out of all that. And a very fiery encounter to start off this State of Origin match here tonight. Gee, they, were, they quickly broke up into various groups, Mick. And uh, following them around was uh, quite a bit of a battle. So it's Wally Lewis kicking for touch. Rain just getting a bit heavier, I feel, sweeping across this ground. And so they're going to take the tap about uh, 20 metres short of the halfway mark. be very interesting to see what team has been put up by that skirmish. Well, this is Gene Miles. who's going to drive it deep downfield. Gary Jack coming around for New South Wales. Jack will get underneath it. And he'll start to run, doesn't get far. And SQ coming in over the top, and the man underneath will be Brian Needling. So now it's Simmons from the dummy half spot. Cross over there is Brian Needling again to put him over. Dummy half for New South Wales is Wayne Pierce. Over to Mortimer. Outside then to Andrew Farrah. He's a pretty big fellow, this fellow, fella Mick, but uh, has had a game for something like a month now. Of course, he had that suspension. He was selected on the first state of origin side for New South Wales, but had that suspension. And uh, they're going in pretty heavy here, and another penalty coming up to Queensland. Mr. Gomesall uh, getting hold of Tunks. He's saying, I was just trying to get hold of him. Actually, I couldn't see. Here it is. Tunks comes in with the shoulder and then has a... Oh, there was nothing really wrong with that, I don't think. Not too much at all. So that'll be Wally Lewis to kick the touch again. He's still about 20 metres inside Queensland Territory and quite a deal of surface water out there, particularly around that cricket pitch area. So they're going to take the tap, Queensland, just about on the halfway mark. Greg Kineskew coming up to it. Kineskew sending it back then to Dave Brown. Brown leading the charge, and there's four New South Wales players in there, Mick. 
Nice tight defence from them in the early part. This is Dowling on his way through. Almost got away from Mortimer before he's put down. Oh, good play from Dowling. He's uh, just carrying on whether he left off in the test. Mark Murray on to Lewis. Lewis now going to be cut back inside by Lambert. He unloaded it. Coming around over there was Colin Scott. They're going to be the tactics, obviously, Mick, for New South Wales. If they're going to get Lewis, they've got to get him cutting back inside to be picked up by that cover defence. Yes, you can see what they're trying to do. I think the wet conditions probably will bring them undone more than be an advantage to them. That's Fullerton Smith playing it now. Kineski is the dummy half. Lewis on the blind side. Back inside to Gene Miles. They're going to use Miles as a kicker. He put up high, but that uh, wind is going to drive it back a little bit. It bounced out of his hands. Tied across field. Paul Vorton's over there. Vorton tries to move, but quickly Parra is over the top to put it down. Gene Miles to dummy half. That's one of the wet areas there. That's close to the centre of the field. Gene Miles, quite happy uh, tonight to have had a bit of experience in the second row. Gene Roach letting one go at Kineski, and this will be another penalty. Well, those two front rowers for New South Wales. They've got a fire, Bill. Uh, they've just got to keep going. Unfortunately, if they keep it up, you'll, uh, they'll be in the sin bin or even worse, off the field. Yes, they're giving a little bit on the ground there. So it'll be Mal Meninga to have a shot at goal. Mal, of course, in the first State of Origin match, two from eight. Disappointing for him on that night, and that was probably the performance that cost him his test spot. So um, he's since got back online pretty well, Nick, but he's in the wet tonight, but a uh, very capable kicker, as you know. And uh, let's hope he's online tonight. Certainly. The conditions won't help one bit, and he's kicking into a howling gale. Yes, quite a deal of wind blowing downfield there. As you can see, you probably will get a, a sight at some stage of the rain being blown downfield, which will be coming straight at Meninga. He, would, he is dead set in front, and he's about oh, 20 metres inside New South Wales territory. There you can get the angle of that rain across field. And Meninga getting quite a boo from this crowd. Gee, it's a big crowd here. I'll be interested to see when that attendance figure goes up in the second half, exactly how many here tonight. But it's encouraging for a, for a state of origin match here in Sydney. There's Meninga on the way. He's going to be underneath it. It won't carry. It'll go underneath the post. Well, and truly underneath. That's Gary Jack. And Jack is going to be put to the ground about 10 metres out from the New South Wales line. So away from dummy half. That's working across there, Wayne Pierce. He is put to the ground. Dummy half is Ray Price. Price will need a big one tonight, Mick. Yes, he's being... Uh... Well, Vorton's breathing down his net. So is Bob Linder. They're both uh, pushing him. He will need. He's leading the side. He has to basically lead them to a win tonight to uh, sustain his position in the side, I feel. Test team will be selected tonight following this match. And uh, Chairman of Selectors Ernie, Ernie Hamilton has made no secret, Nick, that um, the team will be picked on tonight's performance. This one is going to be a good kick. It's found touch, has it? No. Boosted knocks it back in field. Pretty close, but he managed to cut it off. Well, their tactics will be to kick. They must use that gale, and they're going to. And Well, that's the only way to play Queensland, down in their own quarter. This is Colin Scott. Lose the ball, and it's also going to be lost by Brett Kenny. Scoot back in field, was it? Now he's going to play it into touch. Pullet and Smith saying, I think it was in, sir, but uh, touch judges playing up. So at this stage, seven minutes of the match gone by. No points on the board as yet. Noel Cleal packing down into that scrum. There's Ray Price with a cut above his eye. Down they go. 15 metres out from the Queensland line. Mortimer through his legs. And uh, he managed to retain it, did he? Yes, he did. Mark Murray right on top, but it went through his legs on that occasion. Ray Price from dummy half. Lamb across over there to Gary Jack. Jack going to be bowled over by Wally Lewis. Dummy half waiting for it is Pierce. They lost quite a deal of ground on that occasion, New South Wales. That's Pierce doubling around. He's a player that Queensland will have to watch closely. There's Price in as a dummy half. Mortimer to Lamb, then Noel Cleal. The crusher. Dummy half is Simmons, the newcomer in the New South, one of the newcomers in the New South Wales side tonight. Five changes for this team. Eventually, Brian Niebling putting him down. Cleal is the dummy half. Over to Mortimer. Mortimer with a kick over the top. Meninga's back there, takes it. And is eventually put down. Price the man underneath. New South Wales defence pretty solid at this stage. That's Brian Niebling. Of course, they've got to be. They've got to be 100% uh, spot on all night if they're going to keep this team down. That's Gene Miles putting the boot up once again. Gary Jack back there. You can see how quickly that ball pulled up, Nick. Yes, it's still travelling far. Queensland, of course, they're kicking into a, the teeth of a gale. You probably don't see it at home there, but uh, 
it's fair thing I'm not going to go far even when they do try clearing kicks. That's Peter Tucks. He's about five metres inside Queensland Territory. <laughs> Away from the play the ball over there to Roach. Dummy half is Simmons. Simmons back over to Mortimer. It's the final tackle, so he decides to put it up. That win really gets behind it. Colin Scott is back there, takes it safely. Starts to move out of the first tackle. That was one of um, Brett Kenny's, but eventually put down by Farrah. Meninga. We'll, Meninga. Have, we'll have to run quicker than that, Bill. There's Arthur Beetson having a quiet look. So here's the kick up field by Wally Lewis this time. Gary Jack is back there. He's over the halfway mark now. But the tackle over there by Dave Brown will take care of him, ball and all. Dummy half Simmons. Back over to Mortimer. Lamb. Then on to Farrah. Farrah wrapped up though. Dummy half Lamb working around to Roach. Downing coming in. Miles over the other side there. And it's going to be a penalty to New South Wales. Roach having a big grin there. <laughs> Dowling didn't miss, here he comes, no, uh, now he uh, had a little chop, nothing to hurt anyone. Well the crowd started booing at that, whether it was for that or when they pinched here, he obviously started to come in and award the penalty then. So we'll see Ross Conlon, good performance from him in the first State of Origin match. I think what is about four out of five, Mick, something like yes. that. Yes, kicking well, still feel he's uh, lucky to be in the side, there's better wingers running around than Conlon, definitely. Not a lot of better kickers, but still. Here he is. Can he register the first points for New South Wales? 11 and a half minutes of the match gone. Here it is. How's that direction? Direction is no good. Waved away. So the score remains nil all here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. G Miles coming back. Tell you what, you're going to find viewers at home up there that uh, Queensland are going to be pinned in their own quarter for this uh, most of this half unless they get some a vicious attack going and you just have to expect it and they have to defend like hell this is Noel Cleo can he get the pass away no he can't he can't even hold the ball he's lost it Wally Lewis loses it picked up there by Fullerton Smith oh gee the ball rolling loose Mortimer has a guard and everybody has a go at it play on he says and this is Tucks well the handling's not going to be the best here tonight you can expect that that's Ross Conlon Conlon to the quarter line Dummy half Simmons, Simmons away to Cleal. Man underneath was Brian Niebling. Over the top, Fullerton Smith and Dave Brown. That's Roach. Murray and Vorton the tacklers this time. Simmons, Mortimer, the little kick through. Going back is Bostead. Bowie takes it, starts to move. Still going, spun around through the air there by Brett Kenny. He'll play Kineski from dummy half. Kenny hanging by just one leg there, but that's enough to stop him. That is the quarter line you can almost see there. Dave Brown unloaded it. But the tackler very quickly up there was Lamb. Best to take it away there strongly and run onto it, come from deep. Otherwise, they're going to have this problem all night. You can't get a short pass until you hit the clear. If they try and pass under pressure, they'll just drop it. Gene Miles deciding to run this time. He's shaped for the kick. Now he's lost it in the tackle. And New South Wales end up with it. Thanks to Terry Lamb on the spot, but he's playing a double night. Lamb must have knocked it on also. Handling is obviously going to be one big problem for both sides here tonight in these conditions. I'll tell you what, even if it was dry, I think with the hits they're making on each other, Bill, that uh, they'd be dropping it a bit as well. So now it's Mortimer to feed. Kineskew not in the scrum as yet. There's referee Barry Gomasaw. As the rain continues to tumble down. Mortimer to Lamb. There's Lewis, straight over. And puts him down. Quickly to Mortimer, the dummy half. Lamb, not sure who to give it to. Sends it across over there to Brett Kenny. Back inside to Pierce. Taken by the two centres, close and miles. Brett Kenny. Simmons. There's a wall of Maroons coming at him though. Ray Price. Price decides to go himself. Got out of Kineskew's tackle. But 
but it's Greg Dowling to put him over. Quite heavy conditions here now. That's Mortimer putting it up. They're boring through. Colin Scott is back there. Taken by the fullback safely. And he's got a bit of a task when they put him up to him, Mick, there, because uh, that wind is blowing the rain straight down into his eyes. That's true, and he hasn't folded once. And I'll tell you what, dreadful conditions. And he'll be seeing plenty of those in the first half. Both dead playing it back to Canescu. So this is Dowling. Kinson has launched at him. They're having a real battle away from dummy half can SQ. back over to gene miles miles back towards gary jack again over the halfway mark now is the new south wales fullback but it's nibbling over the top and the man underneath was wharton so growth came in as the dummy half then you can tell growth hasn't seen much of the play mick he's nice and clean out there this is ross conlon that's true bill you might see a bit of it right now fair up Back inside then to Roach. Roach to the quarter line. He's a good player, this Roach. He causes heaps of trouble early in the game in Queensland. But he's got a bit more support there tonight. Pierce running onto the ball outside of Mortimer there. Still on the quarter line. Simmons, Mortimer, Price, Martin, Blood and everything there. Eric Grath is dummy half. Millall is the score here. Mortimer. She goes again. Colin Scott is back there, but it won't carry to him. Straight through the hands then of Gene Miles. And the touch judge coming in to make a report. While he's doing that, we'll have a commercial break here. Right, we're waiting for the scrum to pack down now. The scrum is about 18 metres out of the off the Queensland line, but there's the penalty. Thomas Hall penalising Steve Mortar on that occasion. Well, Frank Myler, these conditions would obviously take him back to England, I feel. Yeah, I feel close at all. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of it so far? Obviously, uh, the match is going to be uh, marred by these wet conditions. But yeah. it's nice and tough. Yeah, nice and tough. I thought when the weather started off in the first minute, but I didn't think we'd have any place to play again uh, in that second test of Brisbane. But uh, they've settled down a bit now. And, uh, you know, obviously, this wind's going to be a bit of a problem. And... Uh, Along the Queensland keep out New South Wales, they've got that wing in, the wind in the second now if it's missed out. Mm. Well, New South Wales obviously will need a few points in this first half, won't they? I would say so. I'd say it's an eight-point eight win this. What would, your, uh, what would your tactics be in conditions such as this, Frank? Well, obviously, it's, it's, it's not been caught in your own 25, Bill, but with the conditions being so bad and, you know, handling, you can handle the ball in this type of weather. It uh, can happen, really. OK, that's Eric Groth going back there to pick it up about five metres out from his own line. The crowd cheering Gra Groth on as he runs right across field. Lewis over the top and the man underneath is Paul Morton. Well, you have vivid memories of, um, of Eric Groth in uh, the Kangaroo Tour, Frank? He had a great player. Uh, I could never understand him missing the first test, actually. You'd like to see him not in the second, I guess. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Well, both he and Meninga were destroyers over there on that kangaroo tour, weren't they? Yeah, uh, Meninga especially, and, and he was kicking uh, the goals as well, Bill. Uh, a good player, Meninga, yeah. That's another strong kick down field by Farrah, but once again, Colin Scott is the man on the spot to take it, and he took it very safely indeed. So now it's Gene Miles away from dummy half. He's had plenty of pressure on him tonight, Colin Scott, Nick. Well, plenty. Uh, you can't see it at home, but they, they throw the replay up of all these bombs on the big scoreboard over here. And uh, Colin's been acquitting himself well. They're terrible conditions. And quite frankly, I, it's night like these, or nights like these, that uh, I think we could well do away with the bomb. And that's Gary Jack losing the ball on that occasion as he came into the back line. Meninga back inside to Lewis. Lewis away then to Dowling. Dowling working his way through. Going to ground with it. I thought for a moment he was, he was going to pass there on a couple of occasions. This is Meninga again, away from dummy half. Simmons. Kinescu. No points on the board as yet. That's the test hooker at the moment. Greg Kuneski about 25 metres out from the New South Wales line. Murray to Lewis. To Murray. That was a good move. That was good defence too. I've got to admit that. Needling the man to play the ball now. Dave Brown is dummy half. Over on the blind side to Mark Murray. Tackled by Farrah. Back inside. Colin Scott. Gee, that defence is getting up. Mortimer. Final tackle. Brown is the dummy half. Over to Lewis. Lewis putting it up. 
Jack running across field, losing it. Conlon back there. Takes it and quickly tagged about five metres from his own line. Lewis calling the shots. As New South Wales play it, Gary Jack. One of the few times Queensland have been in the New South Wales quarter. Yes, you'll see the kick very shortly from New South Wales. They've got to get out of this and use that breeze all the time. No use pounding your head up there. Down here's the go. Gary Lamb. Wayne Pierce. Time our panel in the studio. David Wright in charge, assisted there by Barry Muir, Greg Oliphant, and the Great Britain captain Brian Noble. Farrah. GG Miles will give these kicks a bit of a hurry up in that second half, Nick. Yes, he'll really roof it downfield. Colin Scott. He'll have a fair bit of work to do in this first 40 minutes. I think he knew that before he went on the field. Tackle over there by Peter Tanks. Obviously, Lewis winning the toss, Mick, has uh, decided he's uh, just going to try and hold them down in this first half. Chris Price losing it. Hold them down in this first half and then go to town in the second. That's the tactics. Tell you what, uh, those Blues are coming up in defence and uh, Queensland having trouble getting out of their half. And they will right through, there's no doubt about it. Scrum packing down just on the quarter line. Quite a few lines running around there, Mick. Of course, they've had the soccer here also. The last few weeks. Mortimer on the blind side to Eric Growth. There's Malinga taking him head on. Also over there was Brian Neebling. He's doing a fair bit of work in the early part of this game. That's Ray Price. Fullerton Smith underneath. Growth. Back over to Cleo. Hanging off them a little bit there. Well, he was, had a weaving run there. I'm waiting to see what he was going to do. Dummy half Simmons over the top to Lamb. Lamb got away from Colin Scott. Now he puts in a little kick. Lewis is back there. Lewis scoops it back over the dead ball line. We are really roaring up here. A good save from Lewis. Touch shots coming in. Obviously something happened in the back play. He's taking some time off. Probably what the crowd are yelling about. I was following the ball, but obviously something could have happened to Lamb, Mick, after he um, kicked through. Here it is again. Yes, is Lamb. I think he evaded pretty well, though back to the season. And Wally shushing it out over the back line. Dead ball. Wally Fullerton Smith is a man being called out. He's a water penalty to New South Wales. <laughs> referee Barry Gomasaw. Certainly the most controversial referee around at the moment. He's, uh, he handles himself and equips himself quite well. So it'll be Ross Conlon to take his second shot at goal for tonight. Unsuccessful first time round. And we have 19 minutes remaining in this first half. Speaking of Barry Gomesall, other than this fighting business, which everyone's blown up into a top issue, other than that that little idea of his, he's, uh, he goes well on the field, Bill. He's right up with play, knows his rules, and uh, knows ex expects and knows what these guys are going to do to each other in anticipation. Although the Sydney media seem to... Uh disagree with that. They seem to ex expect him to be some sort of an influence on the game here tonight. This is Conlon, and he is offline again, waved away. So the score remains nil all here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Mostead, losing it and then goal area. No try. No try. The man on the spot was Wayne Pierce. And there's Arthur. And we'll see it on the replay. Mostead drops it. Definitely drops it. We'll see what happens right gather. So the drop out from underneath the goal mouth didn't go far either. That's Ray Price unloads it to Mortimer though. Mortimer with a bit of a chance to dodge and weave. That's not the conditions but he unloads it to Cleal. New South Wales 15 metres out from the Queensland line. Mortimer Roach over the top to Jack. Losing it in the tackle. Ball rolling loose. Farrah trying to take it through on the toe. Great defence from Meninga. Had three there and took the guy. And I tell you what, did not muck around. Really a knock on in there by Farrah. Oh, he was really posted there, Meninga. Three good attackers coming at him. Well, that's the end of it. He'd already done the damage. So now... Queensland in possession, but still well down inside their own territory. Mark Murray playing it, Wharton, Lewis, Wally puts the boot underneath it. 
that'll pull up pretty quickly. Splash, down it goes. Gary Jack is back there, just inside the quarter line. Nil all the score here in the second State of Origin match at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Price. He's worrying the Queenslanders a little price with this running from dummy half and he does it so well. So Lamb back inside then to Tunks. Simmons. Back over to Mortimer. Then on to Farrah. He's the man that's doing all the kicking and Colin Scott is on the move again. Down into the in-goal area. Runs up in the field of play. Moving across field. Got away from Brett Kenny, but he put him off balance. So they're able to claim him a few metres out from the Queensland line. Melbourne and dummy half. And the big winger decides to go himself. And that was very safe. For a moment there, I saw him looking at both <laughs> ends, uh, thinking about passing them. Here's Lewis. Lewis up over the top between Eric Groth and Gary Jack. That's good kicking in these conditions against the wind. This is Groth. The crowd love this fellow. They expect something from him. What can they do? Pull him down a couple of metres short of the halfway. Got up, started to go again. Put over a couple of metres the other side of halfway. So now this is Jack. Man in underneath is Molly Fullerton Smith. New South Wales starting to spin it and uh, work it wide. They're not afraid to pass it. Mortimer lost over there by Roach. Maroon's ball now. Greg Dowling from dummy half to Lewis. Lewis reefing it downfield again. This is a good one. Got it behind Conlon and was able to find touch. On the first tackle, I might say, too. So it's up onto the New South Wales quarter line at this stage of the Sydney Cricket Ground. 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Nil all the score. Let's have a look at this kick just before we go to a break. There she is, bouncing over the line. Good one from Wally. Nil all the... New South Wales in possession now. They obviously got that scrum from the feed. There's Arthur. They're about 20 metres short of the halfway mark. Mortimer, Lamb is dummy half. Swings it away over there to Roach, losing it in the tackle. Lewis dips it up, picks it up, slides in the mud, gets up, starts to go. Farrah over there, unloads it to Dowling. Dowling dummies through that gap nicely. Now he gets it away to Gene Miles. Miles dummies, then cuts back inside, but taken by the defence. Great work from Queensland. Miles doing the right thing. Wayne Pierce, the man over there in cover defence. Dowling, back on to Murray. Murray trying to find a way through. Lamb the tackler. They're 10 metres out now. Play the ball on its way. Canescu, Lewis, back inside to Niebling. Niebling put over by Ray Price. So it's Lewis. Got it back over to Canescu, lost it. Gary Jack will end up with it. New South Wales ball a couple of metres out from their own line. That's Steve Mortimer. Well, that was unfortunate for Queensland, but uh, the conditions, well, you can't blame either side for dropping it, and uh, they're getting hit pretty hard, just like that. That's Farrah, the man on the receiving end there. Fullerton Smith over the top, his second row partner, Brian Niebling, also into it. So it's Simmons from dummy half. Up there goes Tunks. Across to Lamb. Lamb right over the top, bounces out of Kenny's hands, picked up by Conlon. That was pretty good work there, Mick. Actually, yes. He had to recover and get back there. And uh, tell you what, they're throwing these long passes near their goal line. Uh, that would worry me. Throwing caution to the wind to yes. a certain extent there. That's Steve Mortimer. Colin Scott is back there. He's earned his money tonight so far. Already, yes. So he comes up to the halfway mark. Noel Cleal is there to tackle him. The water sprays through the air. Dummy half is Noel Meninga. Underneath was Simmons. The man over the top is Wayne Pierce. Genescu over to Lewis. The other way to Murray. Mark Murray trying to find a gap, but it closed. Could have let it go there, Mark. Cleal the tackler. Dummy half is needling. To Lewis. No points on the board as yet. Meninga's had a shot at goal. Condon has had two shots at goal. Twelve and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Lewis. Dowling. Gee, that was a good run of Dowling's before. <gasps> Bit of uh, trouble here, and it's quickly dived on for New South Wales by little Steve Mortimer. He's having a good game, Dowling, getting out a little wide and uh, causing a bit of trouble out there too, I might add. That's Roach. Eight metres from halfway. 
Tommy Half Kenny. Mortimer, Tanks. There's Niebling into the tackle. Also over there will be Fullerton Smith. They seem to be hunting together again, Mick. Yes, they're, they're rather like scavengers, aren't they? Terry Lamb with the boot underneath it. This could be a good kick, but no, it hits that water and that slows it up very smartly. Colin Scott back there again. So Scott to about 18 metres out from the Queensland line. Noel Cleal letting go there. That's Fullerton Smith, but he got it back inside. That's Bostead. Canescu. Niebling. Simmons from one side. From the other is Tunks. Dave Brown. Believe New South Wales defence in there. Dummy half can ask you. Lewis. Over to Vorton, then to Chris Close. Close taken by Farrah. Ray Price over there also. Final tackle. Meninga to Lewis. Lewis driving it downfield again between Grobel and Carey across to growth this time. Crowd start to roar in customary fashion. Eric Growth into the Sydney Cricket Ground mud. Some 18 metres from halfway. This is Mortimer. He's had two runs so far, Steve Mortimer. Cleal. Tackled by Canescu. Dummy half is Simmons. Here's a kick for a touch. Meninga back there, though. Big Mal starts to move straight up to Farrah. He's a pretty big fella, this Farrah. They need someone like that out there to try and keep those big, strong Queensland centres in check. This is Chris Close, one of them. He's only played in the centre twice for Queensland, Megan. He won the man of the match on both occasions. He might have the opportunity in the second half as well. He drops it. And the crowd ironically give a cheer. <laughs> so the scrum and that rain getting heavier here at the cricket ground now. And that wind swirling it around. There it is, Lewis losing the ball. Nine and a half minutes of the first half remaining. Mortimer to Lamb. Lewis on top of him though. Playing it quickly, away from dummy half, Farrah. To the halfway mark. Simmons. Mortimer, clear. Still on the halfway. Mortimer seems to have time to pass the ball. We're giving him plenty of time, and he's giving himself plenty of room. That's Tunks losing it. But New South Wales dived in and recovered. Queensland slow to get to that one on that occasion. Wayne Pearce was about to dive in and force this scrum now. I think they're allowed to be a bit tired about now. But... Yes, I guess you're right, Michael. This is Mark Murray meters inside New South Wales territory. Ray Price getting a lot more involved tonight, Vic. I think he's concentrating on the game rather than Wally Lewis. Well, that's a bit that's a bit different to the last game. Morton thrown to the ground. And he called him to play the ball. Crowd. Down he goes. Crowd doesn't like it. There's Paul Horton <laughs> thinking, what is happening here? What am I doing here? Scrum to go down a few metres inside. New South Wales territory. That's Lewis losing it in the tackle. Mark Murray having a go at it. Knocked back on that occasion, says referee Gomez All. Lewis from dummy half. Horton. A few metres inside New South Wales territory. Just under eight minutes remaining in the half. Lewis to who? No one decides to go himself. Now he gets it back over there to Horton. Horton up the centre. This is Canescu. Dowling. Lost it. Flying through the air. Brett Kenny with it. Quickly grabbed by Colin Scott. Dummy half is Mortimer. Back over there to Lamb. Little kick by Lamb. Flying through the mud they go. The man with it is Brian Niebling. Just a little chip. This is Lewis. Post dead. Picked up by Dowling. That was a knockback. Over the top. Miles eventually off the ground. 
Mortimer trying to force him into touch. Miles still going. Gave him the don't argue a couple of times. Actually, the conditions must be very heavy because Miles did not get going. Kicked into touch with the play the ball. And he'll back down the scrum. Mortimer was hanging on like a little terrier. Had about three shots at it. So it's Mark Murray to feed. To Lewis. Colin Scott. Scott wrapped up. 18 metres out from the New South Wales line. Murray to Lewis. Over to Gene Miles. Losing it. Farrell dive on it. Right on the quarter line. Dummy half Kenny. Put down though in the tackle of... The lock ball, Wharton, Price, Tanks. Dummy half is Simmons. Roach. Quite noticeable, Wally Lewis is uh, roving in defence and also to pick up the short kick that might come over. Boosted's hanging back as well. There's Mortimer putting it back, Boosted will run back. But Colin Scott is there. And Scott. Deciding to run it out. Now wait. Ooh, back behind Bo Steady quickly had to go back to regather. It was sad there. Could have been promising, Nick. Yes, Scott made the break and uh, I don't know what happened to the pass. It died in the air. Fullerton Smith. Kinescu over then to Neeling. Held up a couple of metres from halfway. I really can't make too much comment. I'm just sitting here watching the bill. I think you're enjoying it at home, all of you, whether you live in northern New South Wales or Queensland. It's a tough contest, this. This is Bonnie Lewis, Gene Miles, Miles still trying to give the don't argue over there to clear. He's lost it in the tackle, though. And Mortimer on the spot again to get that loose ball. Pierce. Neeling's there, throws him down. Midway between the quarter and halfway, still in New South Wales territory. That's Gary Jack. Tackler Mark Murray. Almost got out of it. They still haven't put him down. They do now, right on the halfway. So Ray Price. Nil all the score. Lamb. Going across over there is Brett Kenny, but straight to Mal Meninga. Meninga, oh, it's going to be lost. And then... Close. Dropped it. He said no knock on. Came off his boots. Crowd not liking that. But Close doesn't mind. He'll play it back to Fatty Morton. Kinescu. Tanks the tackler. So Fullerton Smith to Mark Murray. Had to take the tackle then, Mark. Yes, he couldn't do much else. No, it was juggling and jolted in his arms. He had to go. Safety first on that occasion. Kineski to Lewis on the blind. Lewis driving it back between Growth and Jack. Jack is there, loses it, and it is in the touch. So now, 10 metres out from the New South Wales line. Mick, I was waiting for the roar from the crowd, but I forgot where I was. <laughs> Just on four minutes remaining in this first half. There it is, going for touch. Jack losing it. So now, Mark Murray to feed. Murray, round the open side to Lewis. Lewis to Colin Scott. Scott away then to Close. Close wrapped up by Kenny. Also into the tackle was Lamb. Lewis. Lewis still going. Pulled out about eight metres out for the New South Wales line. This is Mark Murray. Big chance here, Mick. Yes, they've got to play it very soon. No, they've lost it. Ray Price with it. So away from dummy half goes Pierce. That was a bit of bad news. Three minutes to go to the half-time break. if they go to the break at Mill or Mick um, for New South Wales. That's bad because they should have at least five to six points up with this tailwind. Mortimer kicking through, Dowling with it. Unloads it to Miles. Miles coming back inside. Cleal came at him. Actually, he couldn't see the support coming. He thought there was none there, so he came in field. Rain getting very heavy now. Really tumbling down. Paul Vorton. Vorton. Still going. He's knocked over about eight metres out from the New South Wales line. Dummy half is Mark Murray to Lewis. Lewis turns it back. That's Greg Kineski under there somewhere. Lewis comes up as dummy half. 
Now sends a long one. That's um, Chris Close. Gee, that rain's getting heavy, Vic. Yes, it's just tumbling down. It has been for about an hour and a half to two hours. Lewis to Dowling. Murray losing it. Dived on by Niebling. Knock on. Fortune again for Queensland. Yes, the handling very difficult, of course. I need to tell you that. You can see for yourself. Pity about this uh, weather, Mick. It would have been a, a top-class match this one tonight. It's not too bad so far. <laughs> That's Mortimer back there. I know what you mean. Wide open football. Yes. However, we'll take what we've got. I suppose you could be able to ask Frank Mile or two later on. Uh, we'll be hoping that the weather's like this with the tests are <laughs> Gary Jack. Dummy half winding for it is Eric Groth. Back onto Simmons. It's not playing too badly, Roy Simmons taking it up strongly. That's Tunks. Pushed away Mark Murray. Pushed away the tackle of Fullerton Smith. Lost the ball in the tackle, but it was lost back. He says play on, six to go, Another touched six. by Queensland. Yes, so Simmons plays it back now. This is Tunks. Into the final minute of the first half. Up there is Dummy Half, this time is Pierce. That's Mortimer, Lamb. Lamb Dummies. Dowling's over there, he sends a pass back inside. Picked up on the bounce by Farrah to Mortimer. Mortimer on the halfway. A few metres inside Queensland territory is put down. So now this is Tux, losing it, scooped up by Miles to Lewis, got away from Mortimer, set the long pass, it'll bounce across to Chris Close, he loses it, and a knock on. I'm not being unkind to Chris, I think even he knows occasionally his handling is a bit uh, suspect, well that one came to him nice and lollipoppy. So there's a half-time hooter sounding, and referee Barry Gommelsall says let's have a break and I'm sure the fellas will appreciate that so the half-time score here at the Sydney Cricket Ground Queensland nil New South Wales nil uh, Meningas had one shot at goal unsuccessful of course and Ross Conlon two attempts at goal he was also unsuccessful penalties in the match have gone Queensland way by four to two the scrums New South Wales made by six to five not a lot to talk about in that first half but Frank Myler uh, what are your thoughts at this stage well obviously the weather spoils its uh, it's uh it's an atrocious noise. It reminds me of back home in Wigan or somewhere like this. <laughs> uh, do you think uh, New South Wales now not getting any points out of that first half? Uh, they would need some out of that, wouldn't they? Well, obviously that win is going to matter. And the longer the game goes on, uh, obviously with the win with you, you've got more chance of scoring. Uh, it's not a night for players to stand out. What are your thoughts on, uh, firstly, New South Wales side? Well, conditions have been bad and it's hard to, to judge uh, you know, players. Uh, I've been surprised at Lamb. Uh, I thought he threw a long pass out from his own sticks. Very dangerous thing to do. Uh, he also has put a couple of sharp kicks in where it would have been better putting it upfield. Mm. Um, but uh, really, uh, New South Wales are not really uh, playing it tactically. Well, they didn't play that first half. I think we can see in the second half uh, both Lewis and Gene Miles driving that ball downfield. Gary Jack's going to be in for a busy time. Yeah, well, I'm sure that's what Beatson's going to be saying to uh, Wally well, is... Uh, that's playing in the 25, will he? OK, that's Great Britain coach Frank Myler. We'll have a break and then we'll be back to the studio. David Wright and the boys back there to give you a rundown on the first half of this match. Well, good evening. And Queensland have done quite well, I think, to uh, level the scores or keep the scores level at uh, nil all at half-time in atrocious conditions. Uh, the studio panel here once again with us, uh, ex-internationals Greg Oliphant and Barry Muir. And firstly, uh, Greg, what do you think uh, so far of the Queensland performance and uh, who do you like in the Queensland players? Oh, it's pretty hard to judge under those conditions. Uh, I think Queensland uh, should play the New South Wales in their own territory and they've missed a couple of golden opportunities. They've, uh, they should have kicked on uh, even the first or second tackle when they got close to a goal line, like a grubber kick or, or something similar, uh, rather than throw the long passes because uh, the, uh, the way the uh, handling is, it's... Uh, uh, the ball's very slippery. Sure. What about Queensland players? Well, Greg, who do you think's played well so far and who could uh, improve their performances in the second half? Well, I think uh, uh, Paul Vorton's been playing very well and I, I think Mark Murray and uh, Greg Koneski have been doing a hell of a lot of work. Uh, I think uh, Mel Meningo's got to come in from his wing and do a lot of hard straight running 
and keep that defence that he's been putting up in the first half. I think his defence has broken up a couple of New South Wales movements and, uh, you know, in the defensive uh, line he's been, he's been playing very well. But uh, just the uh, bit more hard running from Mel, one off the ruck, and I think uh, Queensland will go a lot better. All right, well, Barry Muir is not likely to uh, give too many hints to Frank Sta Stanton, but, uh, Barry, who, who would you think for New South Wales? How have they been going and uh, exactly what do you think they've done wrong so far in the first half not to have a lead? Dave, I think uh, the, the uh, front rowers of New South Wales are definitely uh, playing out, out three at the moment. They're taking the ball up, whereas Queensland tend to uh, pass a bit and you can't do that in the mud. That's Tunks, uh, Simmons and uh, Rage. I think they're just going one out, one up and taking it up and causing, you know, causing our pack of forwards a lot of trouble. But the fellow that's, uh, I definitely agree with Frank Myler, uh, Lamb is having a shocker. The short kicks on his own 25, that's dead set putting New South Wales on a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, one thing, they got the win, why wouldn't he kick down? Sure. OK, let's have a look at some of the highlights of the first half. Uh, very tight, and of course the first highlight happened in the first minute, and that was the big brawl, orchestrated to a certain extent, I think, and uh, into it straight away with the New South Wales players, uh, Queensland in possession, uh, Barry. Well, that's obviously uh, New South Wales' tactics, uh, uh, trying to get over the top of New South Wales. And I noticed that over Queensland, I noticed that they give uh, Scott a few whacks there and uh, probably I thought he might have been a weakness, but I thought Scott's uh, held up pretty well. And we also notice here that the referee Gamis will certainly stop the game straight away. There was no uh, suggestion that he was going to let the game flow here and uh, certainly got right out of hand uh, with Queensland, I think, getting, their, uh, getting around about an even share of uh, the punches in. Let's have a look now at just what progressed from this uh, incident and there was uh, a few uh, high balls put up. Obviously that was the uh, order of the day and here's Mortimer's first high ball taken well by Colin Scott and he's had plenty of work, Greg. He's, uh, he's come up very well under pressure. We know he, he can handle it and uh, just the lighting uh, worries Colin a little bit but uh, he, sure, uh, he sure handled it well tonight and uh, he's been playing extremely well. Under, New South Wales' chance, yes, uh, greatest chance here to put some points on the board. Uh, kick comes off the post, Bo said just retrieves inside his in-goal area. Queensland have played pretty well though and uh, big Gene Miles out wide, Barry, has certainly uh, run into plenty of gaps but uh, sometimes the pass has gone astray. Yeah, well, it's obviously uh, Wiley must think there's a weakness out in the centres because he is uh, prepared to throw the, you know, the long and high ball and uh, it's a bit difficult, of course, sometimes in the wet to do that. At, uh, Lewis obviously, obviously thinks Miles is the fellow that could bust the line and uh, just hasn't come off a couple of times, we're very close to it. Queensland did have opportunities when they, as you said, uh, Greg, when they got down close to the line, but really just didn't use that short kick, did they? They tried to plug away. No, well, the, uh, everyone's uh, waiting for the uh, high kick and they've conditioned themselves to, uh, to take that kick, but, you know, there's uh, qu quite a few players have got the ability, as Wally Lewis has, to put the little grubber in and having Miles and Meninga chasing the ball and, uh, and all they've got to do is dive on it. If it's over the line, well, they've, they come back with the ball if it's uh, spilled in the New South Wales goal line. But I couldn't agree with uh, Barry uh, more than uh, the Queensland forwards have got to straighten their running up and just hit the line hard and straight. Certainly when, when you've got that wind with you though, it makes a big difference. I think it feels like you're running downhill when you've got the wind with you. And of course Queensland win, will have the wind in the second half and I'm sure that'll make a big difference to the tactics. One of the things I was surprised about was that Queensland won the toss and elected to run against the wind, something that uh, I would have thought uh, Queensland might have gone the other way and tried to get early points, Barry. Well, you can't trust the weather, can you? you know, because the wind could die down in the second half completely and uh, therefore you've lost any advantage at all. Well, certainly Queensland now has got the advantage. Nil all, the wind in the second half, I'm sure they're going to use it and a real bonus for you is that we have uh, for our uh, after game sum up uh, Great Britain touring captain Brian Noble and also Neil Holding along to give us their impressions of the whole match. Now let's uh, take this break and we'll return uh, with Billy Jay and Mick at the Sydney Cricket Ground for the second half. Back here at the Sydney Cricket Ground for the second half of this match. No changes to the New South Wales side in the first half. That's Steve Mortimer. He's pretty muddy, Mick. Well, they all are, but Mortimer seems to have plenty on him there too. Well, There's Ray Price, the warrior. Yes, uh, Peter Tung's there. It would not be warm out there. It's it's very chilly, and of course, Queensland is just keeping them. Here they come now. Just one interesting statistic out of that first half, Mick. Uh, Queensland lost the ball on 19 occasions. New South Wales nine. Yes, but didn't uh, seem that much to me. No, but, uh, it didn't. But. Uh, <laughs> They're under more pressure, or they were. We'll see what happens in this half. Yes, I think we'll see Lewis and um, and Miles doing quite a deal of kicking in this second half. Deep downfield, keep New South Wales down there and try and take it on from there. But as we we're talking during the halftime break, Mick, it'd be quite some time since we've had nil all in a state of origin match at halftime. It is that. 
So here we are now, getting ready for the second half. Well, Paul Wharton. The defence by the, both sides has been impeccable. There's a good idea of how much water's out there, Mick. <laughs> That's the centre of the field, of course, where Wally Lewis is about to place the ball, getting ready to kick off. I'm sure he'd rather be beside a fire side somewhere. He uh, is not the only one. It's pretty chilly here. But gee, I'm amazed. Look at that. There's uh, sand that Lewis is going to place the ball on. He, can't, he just give it a little pat. If he patted it too much, it'd d disappear. OK, we're ready for the second half now. Referee Barry Gomez all blows the whistle. And Lewis kicks off as the fireworks go off. And Eric Grove back there to take it. And he will run it out from there. First man onto the spot is Greg Kineskew. And also across over there is Brian Niebling. Ray Price, the dummy half. Price speed away, the tackle of Kineskew. But eventually they take care of him, 30 metres out for the New South Wales line. Dummy half is Simmons. Mortimer reverses. And they're going to put the boot underneath it. Andrew Farrad doing the job this time. Colin Scott back there. Well, Scott would be happy that... Uh, hoping that he's not going to get as much work as he did in the first half. This is Meninga. And you can vaguely see the halfway line there. Kineskew. Lewis, and here's the kick. Towering one now with that wind behind him. Gary Jack back there, into the end goal area, hits a pile of water. So he starts to move. Well, and wrapped up. We will see the reverse rolls now, just how uh, strong New South Wales will defend. I don't know if the wind's eased or got up, but I tell you what, whatever, it's pretty dismal out there. So now it's New South Wales in possession. Man with it there is the front row in Roach. This is Tunks, he loses it. Dived on by Neebling. Quickly taken by Cleal. So it's Vorton. Over to Dowling. Very fiery start to this match. Very big blue after only about a minute of play. But they've since settled down. Dave Brown getting close to the New South Wales quarter line. Canescu. Murray. Lewis. Murray. Eventually tackled by Pierce. Underneath and the man over the top is Roach. That's the ploy Stanton wanted to chase them back inside. But uh, they were still making a little ground. It's so one of those forwards didn't... Uh, Absolutely hammer them on that occasion. Niebling playing it. Kineskew will Wally have a shot at field goal. Now he's going to put it up. Gary Jack back there. Jack takes it. Can't get out of the field of play though. Caught in the in goal area. So it'll be a drop out from under the goal now. And Queensland ran into a bit of trouble trying to drop it out from there, Mick, because it was very heavy. There's the shot. He did well, Jack. He was... Uh, well, he had Fullerton Smith coming at him. And Wally was trying to line him up. But... Uh, Oh, there's the dropout, and it's what's happening? It's got to go 10 metres. <laughs> so it's a penalty to Queensland, right in front of the posts. Wow. Noel Cleal. Gary Jack saying, don't worry about it, but I, I, I think it would be pretty hard not to worry about that, Mick. Giving away two points. Well, you'd expect it to be two points. There it is. I tell you what, he nearly did a hamstring there. And look at him. The look on the face is enough. <laughs> yes, that's a thousand words. And there he is. So it's Mal Meninga. After only three and a half minutes of play. He could have the same trouble. Well, he could too, Mick. Don't, don't put the mocker on him, Michael. Tell you what. He's right in front of the post here. Mal Meninga has had one shot at goal tonight. Unsuccessful. Conlon's had two. One that um, I thought he should have been able to put over. There's Big Arthur. As Meninga. There's Frank Stanton pondering what's happening here. Meninga, picture of concentration, a look up. He's right in front of the place, he doesn't have to look far. He's got it. There's the first points on the board. Queensland have a lead at the Sydney Cricket Ground of two points to nil. Hardly a murmur here from the crowd after that. Well, I don't suppose you'd expect them to cheer, Mick, but I think there'll be a few people at home quite happy about it. There's Meninga. Up over the quarter line. Still, it's a good way to start the second half for the Maroons. Yes, get points on the board earlier, but that was just a tragedy, unfortunately. Mm. Wasn't Cleo's fault. He dropped it, stopped dead. But uh, to the audience, take it careful the next time. Hello. Well, 
I was just saying prior to that that uh, Lewis had had a bit of trouble dropping out, and that's uh, exactly what Noel Cleal ran into. So it must be pretty wet down there underneath that post. <laughs> so there's a the kick up. Here's Gary Jack. Takes it. Now, straight ahead. Runs into Fullerton Smith. Vorton, rather. Vorton was the first tackler on that occasion. Eric Growth. Tell you what, he's uh, joining that back line at every opportunity, Growth. Mortimer across onto Farrah. Colin Scott with a bit of work to do. Bouncing back into almost the in goal area. Now he runs it out. Got away from the tackle of Kenny. Eventually pulled down by Farrah. Meninga. Trying to push away Farrah. But not being terribly successful. To Lewis. We'll see the kick downfield from Wally. Bounced off a New South Wales player. Flying across field. Conlon is there. Got away from Bostead. But pulled out on the quarter line. They were all onside then because of the touch of New South Wales. Were. So now up to Kenny having trouble with it. Scooped it up. Over to his other centre, Farrah. Now going to be lost. Ray Price, or rather growth. And great work from uh, Kaneshku. He was following that ball like a lock forward. And just as well, you'll see him coming on the replay. There he is. And uh, the only Queenslander there. So the scrum to pack down midway between the quarter and halfway down in Queensland Territory. You right there, Farmer? I think he's at it. <laughs> yes, I'm right. Here's Wally Lewis, downfield again. It's going to be out on the full. That yeah. livens the crowd up somewhat. There's Frank Stanton. He knows that uh, it's a long way to go yet. Queensland leading by two points to nil at the moment. Scrum to go down. Midway between the quarter and halfway in Queensland Territory. There it is, sailing out over the touchline. Well, and truly out that one. They've lost the ball, New South Wales. Coming up with it is Wally Fullerton-Smith. This is Dowling. And eventually, it'll be Pierce. Very wet in that centre patch there where they're approaching now. This is Gene Miles. Kineskew. Chris Close. Dummy half is Kineskew again. 2-0. The Maroons lead. Lost by Niebling. Man with it is Tanks. He'll play at Simmons from dummy half. Mortimer to Lamb. Lamb across then to Gary Jack. On to Farrah. They haven't put him down as yet. Meninga comes in to help. And the three of them take care of him. So it's a hard slog from here, Mick, for both teams. Very hard slogger. They'll be tired and sore tonight. That's Ray Price. Simmons. Mortimer. Cleal. Out of one tackle and another to the halfway mark. Lost the ball. Got to be picked up by Lewis. Lewis working across field, trying to get away from Mortimer. But Mortimer, Simmons, and also Ray Price in there. Kinescu. Brown. the bounce to Meninga. Midway between the quarter and halfway in New South Wales territory. That's dangerous. Dave Brown trying to pass the ball under great pressure. It looks, you know, if it works, it's lovely, but if it doesn't come off, he gives the ball to New South Wales. Better to play it safe down there. Gene Miles up to the quarter line after running away from that dummy half. That's Fullerton Smith. Kineskew. Two points to nil, the Queensland lead. Penalty goal by Mal Meninga. Niebling. Letting that one go. Back behind, says referee Gomasaw. Crowd not happy about it. Meninga with it. I think that one went forward. No, I'm inclined to agree with you, Mick. There's Lewis putting it up on the final tackle. Gary Jack coming up. Players going everywhere. The ball rolling loose. Who has it? Gary Jack with it. Gee, he was under plenty of pressure there. So will Noel Cleo get the drop out from underneath the goal now? Here's the ball on the way again. It's well positioned too, isn't it, Mick? Another beauty. Dowling goes up, Boasted goes up, but Gary Jack eventually regathers. He did a good job there, Jack. A lot of pressure. Hello, where's he gone with it this time? Noel Cleal. Crowd give him a bit of a cheer because he, he did get it out of trouble. But obviously it's very wet under those goalposts. So 
So now, Queensland in possession and the pressure back on the Blues. Vorton. Dummy half, Canescu. Murray. Niebling. Niebling almost through. Tackler there was Ray Price, also Terry Lamb. Gene Miles. Murray. Lewis. Lewis props. Oh, try to get a pass away and the ball rolled loose. He's regathered. Not quite sure how he did that, but Pierce is there on top of him. Pushed away by Dowling, who decides to have a run. Now he's lost it in the tackle. Dived on by Cleal. He's lost it. And Mark Murray ended up with it, but we'll have a knock on in there somewhere. Two coaches there. Down they go to Gary Jack. Jack about 20 metres out from the New South Wales line. Growth runs into Dowling, knocked to the ground. Plenty of mud out here at the SCG. Tunks. 25 metres out from their own line, New South Wales. Mortimer. Farrah. Knocked down by Murray. Bounced straight off and hurt him too, actually. Straight to the face. Gary Jack over there and tackled nicely by G. Miles. He'll play it. Away from dummy half, Conlon. Tackler there is Niebling. Queensland defence will get up quickly and try and keep New South Wales tamped down inside their own quarter there. There's a man missing in there somewhere, though. Murray's always in the defensive lineup, And he's receiving attention at the moment. Over to Farrah. Farrah's obviously going to be the man to do the kicking for New South Wales. Out on the full. Out on the full. So play coming back to some 18 metres out from the New South Wales line. 12 minutes of the second half gone. These fellows will probably feel as if they've played a full game already. Mark Murray to Lewis. Can't get away from Lamb. Now he does. But he's wrapped up over there. Kenny and also Ray Price there. Dowling. Dowling to 12 metres out from the New South Wales line. Canescu to the dummy half spot. Put down by Mortimer. Lost the ball. Now that's all be a knock on. Yes, it will. He lost it back first, then regathered and knocked it forward then. Say a few words, but uh, scrub the pack down. So here they go with Mortimer to feed. Queensland leaders two points to nil. In by Mortimer, chased by Murray. Gary Jack is dummy half. And the rain is still tumbling down. Gary Jack caught by the marker, who was Greg Canescu. We saw Dowling coming too. So it's Simmons, taken by Canescu. New South Wales pegged down, 10 metres out from their own line. Mortimer over to Pierce. Niebling the man underneath. Dummy half, Farrah. Farrah to kick it down. Oh, gee, that pulled up quickly. Lewis running through. Dives on it. Slides along. He copped one from Farrah too, I think. Scott didn't like it. So now Colin Scott from the dummy half spot. Pulled up very quickly, that ball. Roach the tackler. Dummy half, Fullerton Smith. Picked up well by Vorton. Queensland about 15 metres inside New South Wales territory. Well, they're playing it slowly and uh, it's just rucking and slogging stuff. I suppose, Mick, with a two-point break, they, uh, they're they going to keep it fairly tight, aren't they? Oh, well, that's yes. the only thing to do in a match like this. This is Gene Miles. <laughs> Miles back into the mud. Murray from dummy half. Here's Lewis putting it up again. It's a cross field. That's Eric Growth out there. Meninga boring through. Lost by Growth. Picked up by Niebling. Oh, he sent a pass back inside. That's risky. It's still flying around and New South Wales end up with it. Ray Price, the man to play it. Now, whether he tried to pass it, Mick, or whether he lost it, I... I think he tried to pass it. Mm. Uh, he knew the break was on, took a bit of the punt, and uh, it did come off, unfortunately. This is Eric Growth. Yes, it was a punt, all right. Simmons... Mortimer. Then Farrah. No chance of getting the kick in this time. 
both Dave Brown and Canescu over there. So too is um, Wally Fullerton Smith. So Mortimer. Over to Gary Jack. Down towards Malmeninga. Malmeninga having all sorts of trouble pulling up there, Mick, as he ran back to pick that ball up. Yes, by now they must know that it's going to stop at that water, so they haven't got to go back so far at all. Colin Scott. 30 metres out from the New South Wales line. Rather an overworked lad tonight, Colin Scott. Yes, he's, uh, <laughs> he's had a lot to do. That's Fullerton Smith. They're getting up... Uh, well, I'd say they're round about the quarter line now. Can't see it now. This is Canescu. The man to play the ball, of course, is Dave Brown. Lewis. Price charging across here. He sent it back inside to Niebling. Niebling away then to Canescu. Canescu wrapped up by Cleo, but they're only about seven or eight metres out. The final tackle is on the way. Gene Miles to Lewis. Will he have the drop shot at goal? No, he puts it through. He's following out after it. It bounces off the crossbar. Picked up by Dowling and he's in. Dowling's over underneath the post. Well, Lewis. I know he's pretty good, Mick, but I'm sure he couldn't judge it. It bounce off the crossbar. No, I tell you what, but great work from Dowling to pick up that ball. We'll see it on the replay. Lewis uh, had them in trouble anyhow. Whether it hit the crossbar or not, as you'll see on the replay here, he puts it up. Jack's having to go back, so he's at a disadvantage. And look at that. A second row, or a bigger part in the front row when he's playing this. That's good handling. And have a look at uh, Wally Lewis. He jumped up. He was very, very excited about that one. Here it goes. That's the luck of the game, I guess. But I think you can say, Mick, that New South Wales really haven't had the luck with them and down in that area particularly. There's Lewis. Picks up Downing and says, you beauty. So the Queensland lead at the moment is six points to nil. And Meninga has another shot at goal. Tell you what, uh, I think that puts the nail in the coffin, Bill. It's very hard for New South Wales to come back. Well, they can't seem to clear it. That's right, yes. The more water that gets out there, the I more suppose it sets. that's where, well, you can see it starting to seep out wider now. And uh, with Wally winning the toss and running against that wind in the first half, there's the kick by Meninga, it's successful. So the Queensland lead at the Sydney Cricket Ground. There's Arthur having a quiet little chat. Queensland have the advantage, eight points to nil. OK, ready for the kickoff now. Frank, what did you think of that one? Well, it all, they all count, sir, Bill. I mean, a little bit of luck, but I've been surprised in New South Wales. They've had a, at least three or four times to get rid of that ball. Obviously, they won 25 and they've, they've not done it. And, and this is what happens when you put yourself under that sort of pressure. Well, there's not much they can do about it, is there? Because it's going to get more difficult all the way along the line to clear that ball. Here's Lewis having trouble getting it out from underneath the goal mouth also. But we can see this water spreading wider and wider here from that centre posse. So let's see whether New South Wales can come back. Lamb outside to Kenny. Kenny on there to Gary Jack. Queensland leading by eight points to nil, but the Blues are only ten metres out. This is Lamb over to Cleal. Canescu the tackler. then to Roach. Tackled by Vorton. Queensland defence under a bit of pressure here. The dummy half is Simmons. Mortimer. The little kick through by Mortimer. They all go up. Bouncing clear. Back over the dead ball line. That's the first pressure we've seen applied by New South Wales. And Queensland are going to have trouble getting this ball out from under. And it would be a good tactic as soon as you get it to kick it out over the dead ball line. On the third or fourth, because you, Queensland are not going to clear it out of there at all, you see. So there's Wally Lewis drove it back over the halfway mark. So that was a, a much better kick from, from their point of view. Because New South Wales now are only about 10 metres inside Queensland territory. So Simmons back over to Mortimer. Then to Wayne Pearce. Pierce away to Kenny. Kenny cutting through. Diving tackle by Vorton puts him down. Good work by the lock forward. But it's Lamb and New South Wales taking it on from here. Just on the quarter line. That is Tunks. The Queensland lead is eight points to nil. 20 minutes remaining in the match. The New South Wales crowd coming alive. Terry Lamb is down injured at the moment. That is Ray Price. Lamb looks as though he got a bump in the back. So at Simmons, New South Wales swarming up. They're keen to get moving now. Roach. Roach only about eight metres out. Oh, that Vorton's a magnificent player. He's, he's back into it again, Bill. There's Mortimer. The little kick, it goes across field. Bostead jumps up and takes it nicely. Went across rather than a little bit forward, Mick. It wasn't probably the best of kicks. That's no. Gene Miles. True again, Bill. Of course, I think 
it'll all be erratic. I think their shoes, no matter who the maker are, <laughs> who the, whoever makes them, they'll start to wilt a little bit in this sort of condition. Lewis clearing very quickly, and oh, didn't he get a nice skim off the top of the water? It's back inside the New South Wales quarter line, and that's where Gary Jack will attempt to run it out. So Queensland will be happy if they can clear it away from there and get it up to about 25 metres out from the New South Wales line. Good work from Burstead, too, to come up there. So now it's Ross Conlon. Queensland leading, eight points to nil. This is Cleal. Cleal unloads at Mortimer. Mortimer sends it back the other way. Simmons, Simmons away to Conlon. Conlon put down, 15 metres inside Queensland territory. Good break by New South Wales. So now back to Mortimer. Pierce. Kenny. On this time to Farrar. Dowling's out after him. Farrah getting close to the touchline, kicks in fields. Carrying back into the in-goal area. Collins got out after it, kicks it back over the dead ball line. Well, plenty of action from New South Wales, and the press is on again. And Frank Stepp bringing Ella off to uh, run on the field. Not a bad move either. But that's the first time we've really seen New South Wales spread the ball. And not a bad effort, Bill, under these conditions. They're creating a few problems out there. Meninga seems to be posted with two men coming at him. So now it'll be a drop out from underneath the goal mouth again. Wally Lewis back there. We're waiting for Ella to come on. I'm not sure who he's going to replace. There is a New South Wales player receiving attention at the moment. And it is Terry Lamb again. So obviously that back's playing up. So he could come on to take Lamb's place. Not sure. But Lamb's back with it. New South Wales in possession. Mortimer outside over then to Roach. They're about uh, 15 metres out from the Queensland line. Simmons back over to Cleal. Cleo pulled down, only five metres out. Dummy half, Mortimer. Mortimer flicks it back inside, going through his peers. Pierce a couple of metres out. Lewis has taken the ball from him. Penalty. Penalty, New South Wales. Stealing the ball, Wally Lewis. The boss he's given away two points. Big. He might have saved a couple of others. I think he might have. And Mr. Gobbersall. As you can see here, rolling over the player. It's, he's definitely stolen it. Although I always feel that that's a stupid rule. If you can't hold onto the ball, you don't deserve to have it. The man to leave the field is Brett Kenny. He has been replaced by Steve Ellen. Brett Kenny off. Limping off the field now. And Steve Ellen, his replacement. So Ross Conlon is right in front. They're sending Gary Jack deep downfield just in case he happens to miss it. I don't think Ray Price is terribly confident there, but uh, I noticed Jarvis coming out too. No, he's just uh, going to the touchline. He's put it over there. So it's a Queensland lead at the moment of eight points to two. So we're back here. On to the halfway mark. Steve Ella replacing Brett Kenny in the New South Wales lineup. Won't be hard to pick out uh, Brett Kenny. Oh, you mean Ella? Oh, Ella, rather. He's the one with uh, the nice clean jersey. There's Ray Price. Queensland's lead is eight points to two. Not far away. New South Wales. A converted try could have them level pegging. So now that's Gary Jack. They did well, Mick, to get up on a couple of occasions there. Yes. Uh, well done, New South Wales. Have to give them a pat on the back. Uh, the wind is still blowing, and they're still putting that ball downfield. Bouncing away as much as it can in that wet weather, wet water, wet water, <laughs> in the puddles there, picked up by Colin Scott. You've definitely had that covered. Yes. <laughs> Meninga over to Lewis. Lewis will put it downfield. In between the fullback Gary Jack and Eric Growth. Jack to Growth now. Growth cutting across field. Mark Murray's away from that tackle. And eventually, good, strong run there by Eric Grove. Put him down about 10 metres short of that halfway mark. It's a great run by Grove. Superb. And bringing this crowd alive once again here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Farrah with the boot. Down over the quarter line. Colin Scott running back. Scott runs it up. Steve Eller into the tackle. He's lost it. Dived on by Queensland. So we'll have a scrum. Well recovered, uh, Wally Lewis. He's holding on. <laughs> Mortimer tried to grab the ball. <laughs> Dowling pushing him away. I think Wally just wanted to prove a point. You'll get it when I'm ready. 
Well, a quick tap, and they could have been away, though. Well, it's a scrum, Nick. I, not much they could have no, done. Fair enough. So it'll be Steve Mortimer lining up at that scrum. And a penalty, Queensland, moving off the mark. Shaking his head, there is Roach. the front row, Roach. He's had a good game again, Bill. I know I've mentioned him quite often, but uh, he's a, a lad that takes the ball up all night. Doesn't shirk his defence. Lewis finds touch. So now it's Queensland taking the tap up from there. Can escue dummy half. As it's played over there by Dave Brown. This is the other front rower in Greg Downing. Downing up to the halfway mark. I think Arthur will be a lot happier if Queensland can get up close to that New South Wales quarter line. And Lewis is going to be the man to try and do that, is he? No, he cuts back inside. Mortimer came at him. Eventually picked up by Noel Cleal. Canescu. And the little hooker making some valuable ground. Mark Murray. Queensland lead is eight points to two. G Miles. Dave Brown. Put to the ground, 10 metres inside New South Wales Territory. Final tackle is coming up, so Miles sends it to no one. He decides to go a few metres, then put it up. Very, very high. Jack nearly collided with that post. He'll run it out. Can he run it far, though? Post it over there. And also into the tackle, Fullerton Smith. Dummy half waiting for it is Conlon. Simmons. Tackler Wharton, also can escue. Mortimer from dummy half. Over to Tunks. Eight points to two. Queensland leading. I haven't seen anybody out there that's had a bad game tonight at all. Both sides. That's Roach. 13 minutes remaining in the match. Mortimer. Penalty now. Brian Niebling being penalised. Not letting the man play the ball. Well, he went a little bit too far with it, Brian, and uh, they've been sitting on each other all night. That's taken it just a little bit too far. That lets the pressure off New South Wales. No, it doesn't really. Farrah, but it's a knock-on. It does. Kerry Bostead failed to take it, but Farrah made the initial mistake and failed to find touch. So we'll have a scrum. Ten means you can hardly see Frank stand there in the gloom. He's getting lower and lower near the rail. Well, time's running away for them. They still face quite a task, but they have uh, done pretty well. Now, that's a good piece of thinking there because uh, Colin Scott was up with things. Gene Miles dashing back there. Lamb saw that, put the boot downfield. That was good work by uh, New South Wales, particularly Lamb. So Queensland under a bit of pressure down there, but they do have possession. Meninga running it out. Losing it, dived up by Canescu. Penalty New South Wales. Offside. Came for an offside position. Well, I don't know. I thought it was line ball. We may see a replay of it. Yes, here he goes. Big Mal's running with it. And Kaneski runs back and gets behind play. I, uh, I don't think that's offside as far as I'm concerned. Well, well. Doesn't matter, does it? He's nope. going to kick for goal. He most certainly is. Ross Conlon. Conlon tonight in this match. Has put over one from three, Malinga two from three, and the try by Dowling for Queensland, 16 minutes into the second half. Eight points to two, should become eight points to four. There's Ross Conlon. Around the corner he goes, the ball's on its way. He's missed it. Waved away. So the score remains, Queensland leading by eight points to two. Wally back onto the corner line to start it off from there. Down to Gary Jack again. So the New South Wales fullback is moving all right until Gene Miles appeared on the scene. Appeared on the scene. So both of these fullbacks have had plenty of work. This is Eric Growth. Growth about three or four metres short of the halfway mark. Simmons back on to Noel Cleal. Cleal out of one tackle. Good break by Cleo. He's starting to cause a bit of havoc up the middle there. This is Growth. Back over to Mortimer, then to Lamb. The boot underneath it. Good kick by Lamb. Great kick by Lamb. Brings play up to about eight metres out from the Queensland line. And the pressure is on again. Actually, New South Wales playing very well. The wind is still with Queensland. 
And New South Wales able to get up. But that was a top kick, as you could see there. Bob Linda warming up for Queensland. Mark Murray with it. Crowd not happy about that one. Didn't think it went into the scrum. Dowling. Strong run by the front row. Oh, don't pass it, Gregory, please. Down on the quarter line. That was a good run, too. Where New South Wales scored flat-footed. Wally Lewis. Here's the kick. Gary Jack lets it go. 20 metres out from his own line as he starts to run it out. Chris Close is after him. Close gets him. Down they go in a spray of Martin Slush. Linda not on the field as yet. Jarvis warming up for New South Wales also. That's Steve Ello, one of the replacements. Took the place of Brett Kenny. is on his way. Lost the ball in the tackle. Queensland will get it. Diving in to get it there will be Paul Wharton. Hey, those Blues are starting to look a bit ominous, uh, Bill. They're making they? breaks. Well, weren't they? Uh, Post in. Works up to the halfway mark now. So Linda and Jarvis both waiting to move onto the field. A couple of fresh players for either side. Of course, at this stage, Mikkel uh, is not a bad move. Oh, no, work wonders. So Queensland are in possession. They're 10 metres inside New South Wales territory and they lead by eight points to two. That is Dowling. Kinescu dummy half. Over then to Wally Lewis. Puts the boot underneath it. Eric Groth losing it. Back behind him and quickly dies on to regather. But Digger a little slow to get up on Groth, I felt. Wally put the ball up high enough and uh, he, as Groth received the ball, he should have received Badinger at the same time. Jarvis and Limner still waiting to get onto the field. That's Eric Groth. They're just about on their own quarter line, New South Wales. How's the time going? Eight minutes remaining in the match. Driven upfield by Farrah. Meninga got a hand to it, but it bounced back there to Colin Scott. The fullback runs it up to about five metres from the halfway. Meninga drops up at his dummy half. Over to Lewis. Now the kick downfield but hits the water and stops. Gary Jack. Wharton at him. So too is Dowling. And they put him down. Neebling off. Ryan Neebling off. Bob Linder on. And still Pat Jarvis waiting to get on. Scrappy stuff there and we'll have a knock on. So now Jarvis will be able to make, take his place on the field for New South Wales. I suppose he's hoping that uh, he has a much better start than he did uh, in Brisbane. He takes the field in place of Peter Tux, the front rower for New South Wales. So this is Mark Murray, tackled by Ray Price. Price has stolen the ball from him too, so he'll play it. Mortimer, on then to Cleal. Cleal, trying to get it to growth. It'll be picked up by Lindner. Lindner tried to fight his way through to get away from little Stevie Mortimer, but he had him by the jersey. And he just couldn't shake him. Fullerton Smith. Tackle over there by Jarvis. Tried to start again, but Cleal appeared on the scene. Canescu. Jarvis. Lindner to dummy half. He'll have a run himself. Won't take him long, both he and Jarvis long to get uh, muddy. They're inside the New South Wales quarter line now. The Queensland lead is eight points to two. This is Lewis. A long one to Meninga. Meninga skirting the touchline. Eric Groth takes him head on. Final tackle. They're only about seven or eight metres out. Fullerton Smith to Lewis. There's the bomb. Carrying across field. Ella going up. Miles went at it. Still going. Rolling around the ground. Towed through by Bosted. Bosted couldn't get to it. And New South Wales caught in the end goal area. So it'll be a drop out from under the goal now. A lot of guys standing around waiting to see which way the ball would bounce. It didn't do much at all for them. So here's Noel Cleal to drop out from underneath the goal mouth again. Well, he gets it away. It'll be Gene Miles back there. Tackler is Wayne Pierce. Miles taking plenty of time to get up and play this. That's Dowling. Dowling up the centre. Five and a half minutes remaining in the match. Canescu, Lewis, on then to Chris Close. Close. He is about 12 metres out from the New South Wales line. And this is Canescu. 
He's still going, Canescu, a couple of metres out. Dummy half up there is Bob Lindner. Over to Murray. Lewis again. Dowling. Taken by Ella. And also into the tackle is Noel Cleal, but they're still 10 metres out. Here is the final tackle, Gene Miles. Gene Miles bracing for the line, he's in. Gene Miles in for the try right beside the uprights. Came away from the dummy half spot, found his way through, and in for try number two for Queenslander. That'll wrap it up. That wraps it up, certainly. As you know, I didn't think they had to hope and Hades are going through there. But uh, as you will see on the replay, Miles just picked it up and nonchalantly went. But I tell you what, I've been watching Canescu. Here's Miles, heading for the line. He might have tried to stop, but he's definitely over the line, and uh, there's joy in there somewhere. Gary Jack, one side, Ella the other. Here he is. First tackle he gets away from his... You know, Pierce couldn't get at him. They went the other side of the post, so that took him out of it. Or Jarvis, rather, and also uh, Gary Jack. So he's in for the try. Queensland's lead is 12 points to two. And uh, we have uh, the kick at goal by Mal Meninga. So that's wrapped it up. It's wrapped up the series also, Mick. Yes, the crowd's starting to disperse. They've had enough now. They're wet. Particularly those ones in the outer. They're wet. And uh, I would think not terribly happy. Uh, we've had to drink some uh, of that lunatic soup I often talk about to try and keep warm. I think they'd go for the amber, from the amber to the rum tonight. Here's Mal Meninga. Attempting to convert the try. And a very forlorn group of New South Wales players down there in the in-goal area. Here's Meninga putting it over. And it's 14 points to two here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Well, there's the, the two different looks of the coaches. Frank Stanton slinking back. You can hardly find him in there. And Big Arthur quite happy with himself. He's won the series again for Queensland. Mick, uh, four marks in New South Wales, though. I thought they, they played particularly well in the second half. Well, actually, they've had, territorially, they've had the advantage. And they should have because... Uh, they had the wind against them, but they were kicking judicially. And they did make some magnificent breaks, but they just couldn't go on with it, unfortunately. That's Colin Scott taking it up. Three and a half minutes remaining in the match. By the way, David Wright, Barry Muir, Greg Oliphant and Brian Noble, the Great Britain captain, back there in the studio at the end of this game. And, of course, we'll have a few parting comments from Frank Myler here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. There's Lewis to Gary Jack. He must be getting dizzy by now, having that ball come down to him all night. But Colin Scott had it in the first half. He runs it out, up to a, just on the halfway mark before he's put down. Mark Murray, the tackler, and Chris Close coming in over the top. So it's Mortimer. Back over there this time to Jarvis. By the way, Mick, um, the next match, of course, uh, is also still on the um, State of Origin basis. It's uh, State right? of Origin series, yes. I did think that it was reverting back to Queensland, New South Wales. It's a pity it didn't, but uh, that's, the, that's the story. Well, can Queensland whitewash it? Three in a row. Every chance they might, but still that's a few weeks away. We have the test match next, next Tuesday night. At Lang Park, Jarvis losing it, picked up by Ray Price. That's Tuesday night at Lang Park. Australia playing Great Britain. So we're in the dying stages of this match. Only two minutes to go. And New South Wales in possession. There's the kick by Mortimer. Colin Scott taking it, put to the ground. Ten metres out from the line. Lewis just sitting on the ground saying, I've had it, hurry up that two minutes. Will you get a move on, please? So the dummy half waiting for it. Here's Bostead, there's Lewis. Knocked down by New South Wales player. And eventually going to be picked up over there by Ella, I think it is, underneath all that. Yes, it is. Roof back by Lewis. Everyone having a go at it. Who ends up with it? Paul Vorden. It was Ray Price who went at it. Now there's uh, Wally Lewis helping Ray Price up in the background out of that. So they don't hate each other after all, Mick. Tell you what, you could have fooled me when they first started this game. <laughs> well, I suppose when you when you have a lead of 14 points to two, you can afford to be generous. That's true too. We're into the final minute of play here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and uh, these players aren't in slow motion. That's Bob Lindner wrapping up a bit. Well. Queensland, once again, have tackled themselves into the series. It's some fine attack, but basically it was their defence that hung in again. 
Colin Scott, he had a, a hell's own job in the first half. He never seen so much leather. It was all uncomfortable, but he handled it beautifully. Gene Miles has had a very strong game. And Mark Murray has fed Wally Lewis all the time when he needed it. When Wally didn't need it or wanted, uh, Murray's uh, hung onto it. And that man with the ball there, Dowling, has had a very good game indeed once again, Greg Dowling. And Kanescu, I thought Kanescu uh, put New South Wales back on their heels a bit by some very good running from Dummy Hart. And uh, all these things count. Two tries of the match for Queensland, one by Dowling, 16 minutes into the second half. Miles getting over five minutes from the uh, half time, uh, from full time. Uh, we saw Meninga three goals from four attempts for New South Wales. Ross Conlon, one goal from four. There's the full time hooter. Uh, penalties in the match have gone uh, Queensland wide by six to five. Scrums, New South Wales 10, Queensland seven, and it's all over. Queensland have defeated New South Wales by 14 points to two. Queensland defeating New South Wales by 14 points to two. The Winfield man of the match, once again. Wally Lewis. That uh, W. Lewis name comes up again. OK, Farber, what do you think of it? I thought it was a tremendous game. Uh, of course, the conditions ruined it to start, but both teams uh, stuck to their guns. Uh, new South Wales with their new players, Peter Tungs, who acquitted himself very well, dropped the ball. The man who impressed me most was Steve Roach. Uh, he'll be pushing for one of those spots, I feel, Roach. He impresses me. And Noel Cleal with his stepping runs, but unfortunately they didn't do it soon enough. And uh, hello, they're swapping Guernseys, as you can see down there. Right. Ross Conlon and Melman Ingham. But uh, I think, as I said earlier, Bill, Queensland's defence, far too good, and uh, a little bit of Wally luck when they scored that try off the upright down there. That was the end of New South Wales, that one. You heard a bit of a boo there from the crowd. It wasn't as the players were leaving the field. as the fact that Wally had been named man of the match. It went up on the electronic scoreboard here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. So there's the win for Queensland of 14 points to two. And uh, Frank Marler, what were your thoughts on the game? Well, I think uh, Queensland deserved the win. Uh, the, the defence was certainly better, Bill, and uh, at the end of the day, on a night like it, it, it's been, uh, defences win games. Uh, New South Wales did pretty well, though, in that second half, Frank, when they looked as though uh, Queensland were going to be able to keep them down inside their own quarter, but they made uh, some good breaks and uh, got up very close to that line. Yeah, they, they played a lot, lot better New South Wales second half. Uh, they did move the ball, uh, you know, about the pack, but then when you're behind... Uh, on the scoreline, then you've got to move the ball, Bill, and it wasn't really the night to move it. There's a, an idea of what it's like here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and there's some of the crowd on the hill now leaving, wet and uh, not very happy, I should imagine. Frank, are there any players uh, out of the uh, matches match tonight uh, that are uh, test players um, that um, you felt might uh, have trouble retaining their spots? Well, I thought Darling was was the best forward on the field, mm. uh, especially in the first half. He made some selling breaks. Uh, Kanushi the Uka, very busy play around the around the play of the ball, uh, played very well. So um, you can't see too many changes to the Australian side. Well, not really. Um, Probably hard to get a, any real guide out of tonight. I yeah, uh, I mean you can feel sorry for players on a night like this. It's not the, the ideal night to play rugby league football, but there again. Uh, it was a good game, a hard game, and, and I think at the, at the end of the day, I think it's Queensland's defence that's won it. Frank, would you like to see conditions like this at Lang Park next Tuesday night? No, no, no. I'd, I'd sooner see it's uh, you know firm and hard. Uh, nice and dry track, eh? That's right. All right, Frank. Well, we look forward to seeing the boys in action next Tuesday night at Lang Park in the second Test match. Thanks very much. Thanks Mike. for joining us tonight. That's Great Britain coach Frank Myler. And very shortly, you'll hear from the Great Britain captain, Brian Noble, together with Greg Oliphant, Barry Muir and David Wright. But meantime, from the Sydney Cricket Ground, repeating the final score, Queensland have defeated New South Wales. They've won the State of Origin Series. They took out the match tonight by 14 points to two. And on behalf of all of us here, Farber, any last words? Any parting words for the face? Sure is. You didn't win a casket ticket off me this time, boy. <laughs> OK, well, that's about it from the Sydney Cricket Ground. The boys will be with you shortly, and I'll see you tomorrow night on Eyewitness News. Well, Queensland, undisputed rugby league champions now. Two out of two in the State of Origin Series. There's still the third one to come. But, of course, now Queensland cannot be beaten for the State of Origin Series. A tight dower struggle, typical of wet weather football. But I felt Queensland deserved their win. 14 points to two. And I felt they deserved their win because they took their chances. New South Wales had a few in that second half. But it was Queensland who had only a couple themselves and made sure they scored two tries from them. A good effort from Queensland. And now New South Wales can go back to the drawing board to work out once again what they can do to rectify the problems they've got. Also with uh, us on the panel tonight, fortunately, uh, we've got Great Britain touring captain with us, Brian Noble. Now, Brian uh, has had his uh, second look at State of Origin this season. Brian, what, what do you think of the game? 
I was impressed with the game under the conditions, David. I thought New South Wales, especially in the second half, tried to throw the ball around, which is very, very difficult under these uh, conditions. And it's a case of the best individuals on the night. I think when you pack a forwards game, I don't think you're going to see splendid, fast-flowing football when, when, when it's so wet. How important do you think was the uh, the early points that Queensland got in that second half that that gave them the momentum and of course New South Wales had to play catch up football? Very important. I think it was a case. I think I mentioned it half time. I think the, the side that scored first would win the game, and uh, with the kick from Lewis hitting the crossbar when when Darling went over, I, th I thought it swung the game entirely. I thought Queensland controlled it very well. All right. Well, let's have a look at the first half highlights, and of course, uh, not unexpectedly, in the first minute of the game, a wild brawl erupted. Well, they certainly didn't miss each other here, Dave, did they? Well, I don't think there was much damage done, and I think we all expected that's this to happen, especially on the Sydney Cricket Ground, and obviously they are all worked up and psyched up, and Frank Stanton obviously thought this is the way to get over the top of Queensland, but it didn't work out that way. It didn't work, but I think owing to the wet conditions too, it was important that the, one of the sides got on top early, especially around the middle of the Ruxbury, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think undoubtedly New South Wales put it on. I mean, we had the ball, didn't we? That's right, yep. Chris Close thought he was at Festival Hall. Stripped down, ready for action. Well, it's a long time isn't it? Since, uh, since New South Wales have put the Biff on first up. It's usually the other way around, isn't it? Yes, Queensland starting it. Things have certainly changed. And uh, it wasn't also unexpected uh, in the first half, uh, due to the wet conditions, there was going to be plenty of kicking in this match. And it was New South Wales very early in the piece that applied pressure to Queensland. Both full fullbacks got a lot of work. And it was a Mortimer bomb very early in the game that uh, gave Colin Scott plenty of work early. What did you think of the early start of the game there, Greg? Uh, did you feel that uh, New South Wales had the uh, the better of the early part? Yeah, well, you know, uh, these uh, first half fights, uh, to my way of thinking, uh, are wearing a bit thin. You know, they're professional footballers and, uh, OK, they're uh, hyped up pretty high uh, before they go on the field. But I think they started to control the aggression. Uh, as you said, Colin Scott uh, controlled the ball under pressure, and uh, as he did all night. And uh, you know, it was uh, the kicking that uh, won or lost them the game. And uh, the thing that won the Queensland the game, they decided to play New South Wales in their own territory. You know, and uh, took chances on the first and second tackle instead of playing around with the ball until the fifth and sixth tackle. Well, certainly we expected uh, Ross Conlon, who was selected for the Australian uh, side purely for his kicking, we would have thought, uh, to be a, one of the aces for New South Wales. But that wasn't to be the case. Conlon had a very poor night with the boot, and this was one of the occasions where he missed the goal, but it nearly resulted in a try to New South Wales. Ron, this was the sort of a game, really, wasn't there? Anything Once the ball was on the ground, anything could happen. That's right, Chad. Uh, it's a case of, uh, in these sort of conditions, any sort of kick is going to be a problem for anybody. It could be up, it could be on the ground, and you just don't know what the ball's going to do. So if somebody's going to get a hand to it over the try line, it's there to try, it tries up for grabs. Do you think either side was probably at fault there in not kicking when they got near the line? A lot of so uh, both sides seem at, at times to try and batter their way uh, at the opposition rather than putting the little kick through. I think both sides would have been better off to uh, put the odd kick in because, as I said, the ball's like a bar of soap and with the pools of water about the field, it's going to stop any time in a moment, so either over the top or underneath, and uh, you never know what's going to happen. It's a lottery. Well, there certainly was a lot of loose ball, and uh, whilst Wally Lewis uh, was one of the strong players for Queensland, didn't do a lot of running himself, but certainly set up a lot of play for Queensland, and Gene Miles was certainly one of the ones who did a lot of running. He's an opportunity for Miles uh, into a, a bit of open space. I thought he was one of uh, Queensland's stronger players, Barry. Well, he certainly was, and Wally obviously thought there was a gap out in the centre there somewhere because he kept fitting off long, you know, long laping passes. Uh, but I, I thought uh, Wally... Wally Lewis actually got the better as far as the kicking game was concerned in the first half. He, he was prepared to kick the ball right down, uh, feel and put the pressure on the New South Welshman. But uh, on the other hand, Lamb, you know, he just uh, decided on his own 25 to put the little chip kick over, which puts a hell of a lot of pressure on New South Wales. How important psychologically do you think it was for Queensland to have a new all score line at half time? Well, especially when there's plenty of wind, Dave. Uh, you know, and that they're going to run with the wind in the second half, and this made all the difference. And once again, Wally just handled the, the wind conditions better than New South Wales. Well, let's have a look at another, another one of the highlights in the first half, and that was Lewis once again popping a nice little ball to uh, Vorton. Puts him through the gap. Lewis waiting, waiting. And uh, a lot of in-tight work there done by uh, Lewis to create the opening, but it was Queensland fitting their chances away with a couple of uh, hopeful passes. And we see here, Barry, 
Uh, one of the uh, criticisms you've had with Lamb trying the short kick to get out of his own quarter. I mean, you don't even do that on a dry day, do you? Well, no, that's right. And as you see here, it's put pressure right on New South Wales because Queensland got the ball back and straight away they're, they're uh, hammering New South Wales line. I couldn't understand, you know, Terry Lamb being a, they're giving him such a rap as a great 5-8 and, uh, uh, you know, you wouldn't see Wally doing it. Right. Well, late in the first half, Queensland had some good opportunities to uh, put points on the board and go in with a lead at halftime. It wasn't a B, but there was some great sustained attack here from uh, Queensland, Brian, and also some good defence from New South Wales. I thought New South Wales did really well to keep uh, Queensland out here because just in the last five, ten minutes of that first half, they were pushing hard on the uh, New South Wales line, and I thought it would have given them a boost for a second half the way they defended the New South Wales one, but uh, Queensland came back and did the job they were supposed to do. Certainly important here, uh, Greg, we do, do see here shortly the uh, the, po the opportunities Queensland did have to get that uh, little grubber kick through uh, that you mentioned earlier, and I think uh, had uh, some more balls gone on the ground very close to the line, it's uh, anything can happen. Yeah, well, that's right, David. I, I, I think Queensland fell into a bit of a trap here. They uh, waited to the fifth and sixth tackle uh, to take the kick, and uh, once they're in their territory, uh, as Brian said, anything can happen. It's a bit of a lottery. And I feel that uh, had they put the kick through on the first or second tackle and they had the chases, well, uh, anything could have happened. But, uh, you know, to my way of thinking, uh, something that we've missed out, and I, I think it's full marks to Arthur Beetson for the, uh, for the tactics they've used tonight and uh, the way he's controlled his players to uh, go out there and uh, play the game the way it should be playing in, in all conditions. We discussed at half time the fact that Queensland elected to run against the wind in the first half. Uh, do you think, Brian, they went out there solely uh, with that in mind just to keep things very tight in that first half, give nothing away, and uh, any points they got in the first half was going to be a bonus for them? That's right. I, th I think uh, I wouldn't have played against the elements uh, myself because I think you have to play with them because you never know what's going to happen in the second half. They might go as well as anything. Um, I certainly wouldn't have played uh, with them, no. All right, well, that was the score at half-time, nil all, and after this commercial break, we'll be back with the highlights of the second half, which includes two great Queensland tries. You didn't have to be an expert to know what Queensland tactics were going to be in the second half, and that was to kick the ball well downfield with the trailing wind. And, of course, New South Wales, I felt, played it very well early in the second half, too. They played it very tight. They hassled the uh, Queensland uh, kickers. They used a double marker quite often and really put a fair bit of pressure on Queensland in the early part of the, uh, of the uh, second half. But it was a Queensland bomb that resulted, ultimately, in the first points in the second half. Playing it, Canescu, will Wally have a shot at field goal? No, he's as Lewis, play. and uh, as we expected, the kick playing a very big part in this game uh, early in the second half. He was uh, a superb kick from Lewis. Uh, he always aimed them for the post and you know the most pressure when, when you're dropping the ball in between the post or to the side of the post, your full backs got to really on the ball to take them because they have a lot of work to do these days of full backs keeping those balls out. Greg, I know you're a big fan of uh, Gary Jacks being in, uh, a Balmain boy and an ex-Balmain Balmain boy yourself. He's an ex-Tiger, he must be good uh, David, but uh, I'm a Queenslander and uh, but I think that the players leading up to that uh, the bomb and uh, putting the pressure on New South Wales, Dowling, Wharton and Canescu, they've done quite a lot of work around uh, up in tight in the middle. You had to feel uh, sorry there for Noel Cleal, didn't you? Yeah. He's done his best uh, to try and get out and of course the ball has just landed straight into the water. Uh, the ball then hadn't gone the 10 metres, an automatic penalty 10 metres in front to Queensland and Mel Meninga made no mistake. And it was good to see that uh, the big fellow was back online tonight and uh, that could almost uh, ensure him an Australian jumper uh, for the test next Tuesday night. Once again, it was the kick that resulted in more points for Queensland and once again, it was Wally Lewis putting it up. But this time, on the spot, Greg Dowling to scoop up the ball, juggle it and score a great try. And there we see once again, Barry, that harassment uh, there by Queensland on this occasion to, to make sure that New South Wales had plenty of problems. Well, this is, this is definitely where Queensland handled the conditions better in the second half, which is very surprising because you thought that New South Wales being on their home ground. But uh, Queensland certainly said, OK, uh, they're going to kick out. We'll just move up, put the fullback under pressure, whoever's going to kick the ball. And, uh, and that's resulted every time they did try and kick, them, kick their way out of trouble, they just couldn't get it away. Well, this is what we see first up here is the pressure applied by Queensland and it's this sort of pressure where they forced the kicker into errors and uh, that allowed Queensland to uh, keep a territorial advantage very early in the second half and it was then that the try was scored from a Wally Lewis bomb. Let's have a look at that now with Lewis putting it right on the spot and as Brian said just a moment ago, right underneath the sticks and very difficult. It looked to me even that uh, Lewis had a good chance of scoring himself, Brian. I thought it was going to go over himself, himself, Dave, uh, but... Uh... 
Dowling backed up very, very well. And when you're putting balls there, they can hit the post, they can hit the bar, they can do anything. They're going to stop in the mud behind the sticks as well. Are, so those are superb kicks. Those win matches in these sort of conditions. Well, what about the take from uh, Manin uh, from uh, Dowling, Brian? It's more like a slip catch. Like to do that again. <laughs> more like a slip catch, Damien, for yeah. that. And he just follows through. I thought it was a tremendous catch. I think it was a $100 dollar bill tied yeah. that ball somewhere. There it is once again, and uh, certainly Greg Dowling will be very proud of that one. As I said uh, just prior to this uh, second half highlights, that I think Queensland really took their chances. That was the sort of chance that could have gone to ground, and you wouldn't have blamed Greg Dowling for it. But that wasn't the case. It was uh, him taking the ball, trying every inch of the way to get it, and of course converting any chance into points. But that wasn't the end of the game. At 8 0, Queensland in a very good position, but we saw over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, New South Wales come back strongly, and it was through their uh, outside backs. Really, and Brett Kenny, one of the stronger players out wide. This is obviously where New South Wales said, OK, we're 8 0 down, let's take the risk and uh, throw the ball around and see what can happen because, uh, you know, in these sort of conditions, anything can happen, Dave. And, and they did it well too, New South Wales, and they, they, you know, they really give Queensland a bit of a fright. They took it away from the forwards and just threw it in the back line and. Uh, you know, a couple of times they're just unlucky to get knocked over short of the try line. At the same time, Barry, Queensland defence, terrific. Oh, wasn't unbelievable. This is right. That's where New South Wales, in the old days, or, you know, uh, they do stretch you wide, and if your defence just lacks a little bit of heart there, well, they, they get on top of you. But not this time. Queensland defence was terrific. Their cover defence was good, and up the middle was tremendous in the second half. Fine effort by New South Wales. And once uh, from here, now we see the Mortimer bomb, but uh, what about Kerry Bastard here? Great take by Bastard and that really relieved a lot of pressure for Queensland. As we said, Queensland had to withstand a lot of pressure early in the second half. Uh, from that situation, though, we saw New South Wales uh, a little bit later on, uh, right through this time where they were applying plenty of pressure, we saw Terry Lamb uh, try a new little tactic and where New South Wales won the scrum and put the little quick kick through and that put plenty of pressure right back on Queensland, Greg. Yeah, it was a great tactic. Uh, Colin Scott was uh, up in the uh, front line of uh, defence on the blind side and, uh, you know, Scotty had a great game tonight and so did uh, Gary Jack, but uh, you couldn't split them. But... Uh, yeah, you know, it was a great tactical ploy and, uh, you know, Queensland recovered and uh, I bet their hearts were in their mouth at that stage of the game. That was an interesting uh, decision there by Gamersell. I felt that was no way offside and, of course, Conlon ultimately kicked a goal from that to bring the scores back to uh, eight points to two. Well, he but appeared I... to run him onside, to my way of thinking, but, uh, you know, he's the man in the middle and... Uh, Looks pretty easy from where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have liked to have been out there tonight at all. And, of course, uh, just to uh, cap things off, to put the cream on it, it was uh, Queensland once again uh, finishing the game over all over the top of New South Wales. A great try here from Queensland. And there's a little fella that had a top game today as well, Barry. Well, I, I reckon Canescu had his best game for Queensland. Uh, he, he really done a hell of a lot of work up the middle. And every time he got the ball from the dummy half, he took it up and he, he kept New South Wales on the back pedal, which is terrific in uh, conditions like this. And here goes uh, miles over for this try strong anywhere him and Lewis strong from five yards out and because that set the seal for a victory which was a well-deserved victory too I thought. What do you think of Gene Miles's game Brian? Very strong centre he's a big strong lad and he can run when he gets away you have to get up on him fast and put on real defence against him because if you give him a gap he's going to score points but out there if you give him momentum like he gets his momentum up here there's nobody going to stop him from there he's a very strong player. But he's definitely over the line and, uh, and certainly that, uh, as I say, put the seal on it for Queensland, a 14 points to two uh, victory. And uh, that's just how to run from dummy half. Low and hard, plenty of traction, even in the wet conditions. And Miles makes sure that he gets across, even under the attention of Gary Jack and Pat Jarvis. We'll take one more commercial break and be back uh, after this commercial break with an interview with Neil Holding. Neil Holding, the uh, Great Britain first test halfback, has been uh, up here with us watching uh, tonight's game. And unfortunately, Neil was injured uh, after only 20 minutes in the uh, first test last week. Must have been uh, very disappointing for you, Neil. I was very disappointing. I mean, first chance he had of a test jersey. And I only lasted 20 minutes of the game. It was a little unlucky tackle for me, but I mean, rugby league is for, there for hard tackles. And unfortunately, I was at the end of one. It was a knee injury? Yeah, I was, um, I'd tore, well, I'm not tore. I put a lot of strain on me medial ligaments. But the doctor operated and was supposedly OK after that. There was one uh, suggestion uh, straight after the injury had occurred that uh, you could well be uh, going back uh, home. Now, uh, presumably now the operation's been a success and uh, hopefully you're going to be uh, sticking with the tour? That's right. They said to me uh, after the game, well, the doctors couldn't analyse it properly and I had to go into hospital. And the fear was that I was going home on the next plane. 
But as the treatment's gone along, I mean, it's only been nine days now since the operation, and the way Ronnie Barrett's talking to me, I should be fit for next week. Well, uh, looking at tonight's game and uh, the two halfbacks that were on show, uh, Mortimer and uh, Mark Murray, obviously not a, uh, a real uh, backs game tonight, but certainly both performed quite well. Uh, what do you think of their games? I think Mark Murray did enough to keep his place because, as you were saying, it was a forwards game tonight with the wet conditions and Mark's a good hard physical player. He adapts well to forward role. But Mark, uh, Stevie Mortimer needs these dry conditions. It just didn't suit his game tonight. Yeah, I think uh, the wet weather were also added to by the tears from Steve Mortimer as he realised it was going to be a wet game and really uh, lost all chance of uh, playing, I think, in the uh, second test. Well, thanks very much, Neil, for uh, coming up. All the best for the remainder of the tour and hope the uh, knee becomes uh, 100% for you. Thanks very much, Dave. OK, well, it'll be very interesting now to see, after the uh, result of tonight's game, just what uh, selection changes, if any, occur to the Australian Test side for the second test to be played at Lang Park next Tuesday night. And Greg Oliphant, who uh, did very well in selecting the first Test team, I think, Ollie, you got about 3 out of 13, did you? Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> I uh, think I got about 12 out of the uh, 15, but uh, I think they'll stay with uh, Gary Jack, and you know, there's a bit of a cloud over uh, Mel Meninga, but... For mine, I think they'll uh, move Mel Meninga into the centre with Gene Miles and uh, bring in Eric Grace, who I thought had a strong game on one wing with uh, Bowie on the other. People might say that uh, Brett Kenny was he was a top player in the first test, but uh, he seemed to be carrying a bit of injury as he's walking off the field there. But uh, to my way of thinking, that'll be the back line with probably uh, Mark Murray. I th thought he had a terrific game tonight. He fed uh, Wally Lewis well. He uh, did plenty of uh, defence. And uh, also, I think uh, Fatty Vorton will... It's overdue, but I think he'll uh, get back into the test side. You know, I think uh, he should be either lock or second row. Brian, just on those comments of Greg's, uh, what would you, what would your thoughts be on Eric Graith being included in the uh, Australian test side? I don't really know, Dave. I, I don't think on tonight's performance uh, he did enough. I think the selectors seem to think they're just going to swap players for players. I think. Ross Conlon will lose his position. I don't like to say players are going to lose a position, but I think he'll lose his and it'll be a straight swap for Mal Meninga, leaving Kenny and Miles in the centres. I agree with Greg on the, on the fact that I think Paul Voughton had a big game, and I think my pack would be, would be a mixture of Price, Pierce, Voughton, Dowling. I think Roach, the New South Wales bloke, had a good game, uh, and I think Kineski will, will, will play hooker. I think that, that'll be certainly one of the contentious positions will be the front row. What's your thoughts there, Barry, on the front row? Well, I thought that probably Rachel will get a nod there uh, in front of Brown, but, you know, you can't knock Brown's game because uh, he did his job well and uh, if you're a good front rower, you're not supposed to see anybody because you're on the ground doing the tackling. Uh, but probably they'll put Roach in and, you know, uh, uh, same as Niebling, I don't think you're going to knock Niebling either. Uh, he had a good first test to do and I think they'll stick with him because those second rows are Fulton and Smith and Niebling, they did a tremendous job. You know, you didn't see much of them and you're not supposed to see much of them in the wet. Uh, well, they're probably going to be the old uh, tactics of New South Wales, we've got to get the goal kicker in and it's going to be between uh, Meninga and uh, Conlon, I'd say. Uh, Bo still will hold his position on one wing. And uh, I reckon Meninga, they've got to give him the go because he was a form kicker on tonight's performance. Harves, Lewis and Murray, well, I reckon that's got to be dead set the same. I think the, the point being here that, of course, uh, Australia won the uh, first test, won it convincingly uh, by quite a good margin, and uh, tonight's conditions certainly lend themselves to very tight play, and I, I've got grave doubts whether the selectors will uh, put a lot of weight into uh, performances that weren't quite up to the normal standard of uh, uh, some players in contention, and I'll be uh, greatly surprised if there's many changes. Certainly Meninga, I think Meninga will come in on the wing. Um, but uh, talking about uh, test selections, uh, I'd be interested to know from Brian uh, how the preparation's going for the Great Britain side of uh, preparation for the test. Very well. Uh, we've ironed out a few problems we thought we had from the first test, which is mainly we didn't put Australia under enough pressure in their own 25. I, I think our defence wasn't too bad, although 25 points is a lot to accept in a test match. We've to tighten that up, obviously. But we've been working on our attack and... Uh, we might have a few surprises yet for the Australians. I, I think we're a 10, 15 point better outfit than we were in the first test. How about the preparation? Uh, there's been some criticism uh, over recent uh, weeks about the lack of uh, very high standard opposition leading up to the uh, test matches. Uh, what's your thoughts? There's no, no doubt about it. I think it's no secret amongst our camp that we'd have liked a couple of tougher games, you know, uh, perhaps throwing a state of origin game, you know, or uh, an origin side down in New South Wales or Queensland before 
a test match or one of the top Sydney sides or maybe a top Brisbane side. You know, we, we obviously could have done with a, a top pressure game to put us under pressure so we can try things out under pressure. I, I just feel that uh, one of the prime opportunities uh, for, for blooding young players and uh, actually Queensland showed it by picking a side minus the uh, internationals a couple of weeks ago against New Zealand when uh, Queensland put out a very good young side and uh, that could have been actually the ideal opposition then not coming up against fellows that you're going to meet in the test matches. It would have been superb if they kept that side together and, and given us a crack at them because uh, we could have tried things out against them and no doubt they could have tried things out against us. I mean, benefit for both of us. All right, Brian, well, thanks very much for uh, coming up tonight. We really appreciate your uh, comments. I uh, wish you all the best for the remainder of the tour. So we, before we close this evening, we have the electronic sales and rentals try of the match for you to have a look at. And it's a very simple matter for you to name the player that scores this try for Queensland. You can get your entry forms in tomorrow's Daily Sun. And uh, all you have to do is put that player's name on the entry form and you have an opportunity to win a video recorder, that video recorder right there, and uh, the movie package that goes along with it. A great prize for only naming the uh, player that scored that electronic sales and rentals player of the match. So uh, that's all for me and from the panel uh, for this evening. I hope you've enjoyed the game. We'll uh, join you once again uh, for the second test next Tuesday night. So it's David Wright for TVA Sport. Good evening. Tomorrow night at 9.30, be watching for more football action as North Sydney vs St George in the National Panasonic Cup. But now stay tuned for Eyewitness World News, followed by the Dukes of Hazard. And watch them rumble as the mighty league men tumble and the victors and the vanquished never yield. Join the champions unleashed, the champions unleashed, the thousands as they rise.